Now we can hear you. You're here both on the kill stream. Tazariak stepping away, so we'll wait a second till he gets back. Oh wait, he's coming back right back. I think pretty soon. He he, he can go first because I'm I was coming thinking into that. this debate uh, genuinely like I'm, I'm confused why this is even an, even a debate. So I'm just interested in what his argument is. I mean, my argument is so basic and obvious that there's no point even stating it. Okay. All right. Well, we'll let him go first. That, I mean, I don't think he'll necessarily object to that. Uh, and we'll get him back in here in just a second. Uh, just past the 7 p.m. Eastern hour. Uh, thank you, Drew, for that super chat. Uh, Captain, can you hear hey, me? What's he confused about? I heard it. Well, uh, yeah, I'm just, I, I don't know what uh, your position is. So that's, I think you would probably know what my position point. is. It's just, right. it's just based yeah. in like conventional statistics. So I'm just curious what your position is. I'm, I'm here kind of, I'm here just like, oh, like, what even could possibly be the argument uh, from your side? So that's why I'm, I'm, here, I'm here to listen. <laughs> I, like, I like you, Joe. I like you. Is it Joe or Joel? Which one do you prefer? Joe. Joe? Okay, I'll call you yeah. Joe. If I say Jay by mistake, you know, we, we abbreviate, so I might call you Jay. If you call me T, I ain't going to complain. Um, I don't I mean, I guess we do the opening first and then do a feel out and just go from there. That's kind of um, usually on. Um, yeah. Hey, what's that word you called it, Ralph? You called it. Uh, You said you didn't call it debate or battle. You said another word. Blood what's sports. Word? Blood sports. Blood well, sport. I like that. Yeah. I like blood sport. Blood sport. I think I'm going to call it blood. I usually like to say battle because when you say battle as opposed to debate, it, it gives a different spirit or different vibe on what you're about to do to whoever it is you're talking yeah, to. So I like Blood I like Sports, Blood especially Sports. for this format, because it's not a formal debate, and I don't yeah. really want a formal debate anyway. More, right, of, a, right. more of a discussion, more of a, you know, maybe it gets testy, maybe it doesn't, but it could go anywhere. Uh, and sometimes yeah, I'll say, how it goes. So, 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 sometimes I'll say match. I, I think that that has a better yeah, connotation. Blood Sport but, is like the most perfect yeah. word. I'm going to steal it. I like that. All right, cool. Well, go yeah. ahead. You can take it away. Oh, it's ready. Oh, okay. So I'm, I'll just, I guess I'll introduce myself. Sure. Um, so to those that don't know me, I think I'm the first black guy in uh, Clear Streams Hall of Fame. Maybe Jesse Lee Peterson might be in there. I'm not sure. Uh, but I'm Captain Tazariak of <laughs> ISUBK, uh, under Commander Jenny Hanna. What we do is uh, we go out and actively teach uh, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians uh, who they are uh, ethnically, according to uh, the Bible, um, historical records, uh, documentation, and stuff, some oral tradition as well. Uh, we recognize the problems that um, have plagued black people. We recognize um, our failures. We recognize our false love, our false devotion. And so we go about to fix those problems. So it's one thing to point out the cause or the root of the problem, but it's also another thing to point out the solution so that we don't have to have that problem anymore. So in today's conversation, discussing with Joel Davis, uh, black crime versus white crime, which one is worse? My position, of course, is that white crime is worse. I, just like he's going to think it's a no brainer. I think it's a no brainer. There's no worse crime ever than white crime. Um, so that's kind of like my position, and I'll yield from there. Go ahead, Joel. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, my position is just that it's quite statistically clear. That blacks commit far more murders and other violent crimes uh, proportionally than, than whites do in the United States and in other um, white countries um, where blacks are present, such as the UK or France. And uh, it's just like objectively true. Now, is that the is do we just want to get started in the back and forth questioning? Because I feel like maybe that, that be, yeah, that I, mean, be, I, I thought he was gonna say more than that. That's all well, no, it's fine. I mean, the the meat of the thing I, is, he is the, to, right, he don't have to have more than that, yeah, I, that's I just, right, yeah, yeah, it doesn't have to be a long winded thing. Um, I, I guess I'll let you start it off, Captain. Um, you know, he seems to say it's a no brainer, right? That there's nothing to this, and obviously, you know, black crime's worse, and obviously, there's more of it. What do you, what do you say to that? And and then, then you can take it away however you want to. So, so I typically expect that that type of argument or statement from um, when I'm facing, uh, we say our oppressor, because sometimes you know you can't say white man or something like that. But from a, from a, our a, from an oppressive perspective, we look at it as a pride, um, their pride to not acknowledge the evil or wicked that they have done in this place, like 
the murders that you see on TV doesn't really hold a candle to the murders that Europeans or whites, whichever you want to call them, doesn't hold a candle to the murder that they've committed. Throughout history, whether you want to do historically, whether you want to do anything, they're the only people that can, for example, I, I guess I'll ask you a question. Are you a Trump supporter or, or Trump or Biden? Which one would you be? Oh, well, I, w- I would like Trump to win the election. You So you would like him to, so I'm assuming you was approving of him running the first time. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I'm not like a, a massive Trump supporter because mm-hmm. of uh, how zogged he is, uh, yeah. but, but nevertheless, I see him as the lesser evil. So you still would want him to be president, even though he just got arrested. Yeah, I mean, but the crime that he got arrested for is is literally like his opponent has done the exact same thing. So it's not even relevant, I don't think, to the discussion between Trump versus Biden. So do you think that the FBI was wrong for arresting Trump? Well, it's a selective application of justice. I mean, you, uh, yes they, no. you can tell me yes or no and explain. Well, like, yeah, I am explaining. It's a selective application of justice. I don't know what, I'm where, asking, like, what I'm asking, Joe, I don't mean to interrupt you. The reason why I say you can say yes or no and then explain, I'm trying to get your position. Do you think it was wrong when they locked him up? Yes or no? If I can get I think it was wrong. I think it was wrong to arrest him. Okay. And the reason why it was wrong to arrest him was because Clinton okay. did something even worse, gets away with it. Biden has done worse things, gets away with it. So it's a selective application. Like if we're going to have a political process um, that is quote unquote um, suppo- under the supposed rules of liberal democracy, I don't personally subscribe to liberal democratic values. But if we're going to accept those values, that you, if you have a kind of uh, political bias in how you apply the law um, in a one-sided fashion, that kind of undermines the whole, the whole premise. Um, mm. That's interesting, man. I'm gonna tell you, like, I'm very skilled at the blood sport. Thank you, Ralph, for giving me that term, blood sport. You're welcome. And if you think about the title, the title is Black Crime versus White Crime, which is worse. And although Trump is locked up for a crime. He says the FBI is wrong for locking him up, not because he's innocent, but because he's done nothing different than the Democratic Party done. So they criminals on the left side, which is white folk, right side, which is white folk. Those are crimes. And he still wants him to be president, even though the FBI is locking him up for a crime. So when you say which one is worse, your hypocrisy shows that your crime is worse than ours. We couldn't do that. Like we couldn't do, we couldn't run, be president, not be president, get locked up by the FBI and then go be president again. But you can, because the biggest hypocrites are you. Like the way you answered that, which was eloquent by the way, that shows when we have this type of discussion, when you say it's a no brainer, that's because you're blinded by your um, self-will, if you want to call it manifest destiny, you what you feel is your right to take back your land by any means, even if, even if it's at the expense of out my people, it wouldn't matter to you. So you kind of just killed yourself in the, with the title of this debate by the way you explained that. Well, no, because uh, you're alleging that whites have committed this... Uh, worse crime but you haven't actually explained what specific crimes you're talking about that are worse like what do you mean well are we gonna get into that but i just want to show it doesn't even matter what crimes white people commit you still want them to run for office so i got another question the proud boy the proud boys when they ran up on washington dc was that a good thing or bad thing are you talking about january 6th yes something else Yes, no, Jan- we, you know I'm talking about January 6th. Um, well, the January, I think it was a, a mistake to behave in that way because. Okay, so it was bad? Um, well, I don't, I don't accept the premise. I think their frustration was legitimate um, at the election and they were nonviolent. Uh, they were also kind of allowed in largely. So I think overall, it's it's definitely overblown um, the severity <laughs> of what happened. It's, it's it's incredibly overblown for political purposes. <laughs> this is what I mean by the hypocrisy. So, could we storm the castle? 
meaning black people. What would happen? Well, you know, well, earlier, earlier uh, in, in 2020, you guys burnt down like how many American cities because you were upset that um, we, we uh, some Negro had a uh, died of a drug down, overdose. We didn't, burn down, we didn't burn down any cities, but we're not talking about burning down the cities. I asked you a question. Could black people do what the Proud Boys did on the White House? Yeah, and but instead instead of being uh, vilified, they would probably be celebrated. Um, you, how, wait, wait, the wait, Democrats wait. would get together and say, "Oh, you know, it, it would be it would be white supremacist of us to hold these people accountable." I'm saying that was a good thing. The Boogaloo Boys are the ones that burned down the cities. Black people did not do that. That's a lie. First of all, another thing of hypocrites, the greatest liar on the face. Well, I'm, I'm, I don't want to do that yet. But you just said that the Democrats would applaud if black people did it. Correct. But if I just look at the reputation of black interact, excuse me, black interaction with government officials, which are predominantly by your people, we get killed when we do stuff like that. We get killed by your police. We get killed by uh, friendly, I don't want to say friendly fight. We get killed by citizens. So I cannot, I, I think you're being deceptive when you actually are saying that we will be able to do it and it would be applauded. I don't think you're being an honest man, and I don't expect you to be, but I don't think you're being honest to say that we would be able to storm the castle and then black people would be supported or by the Democrats, the Republicans wouldn't support it, but you're saying the Democrats would support it. That's what you're saying? Correct. Can you prove that? Well, no, because I, I can't really think of a situation which is analogous, so I guess you it's impossible to know exactly how they would react unless it happened. Right. Because something like uh, that. But you happen. asked me, you asked me a hypothetical. So definitely. I just responded to it. No, definitely hypothetical, but there's no correlation to show whether they would get away with it or not. Right. Yeah. Well, you just, you just invented a hypothetical scenario. Then asked me, how do I think it would go down? Then I answered you. Mm -hmm. And now you're saying, well, what's the evidence for that? It's like, well, it's a hypothetical. There is no concrete evidence that you can really appeal to. Um, so it's just you're just kind of uh, going into this kind of irrelevant territory right now. When you're talking about what's worse, like white crime or black crime, you're talking about uh, violence. I mean, the statistics are very clear that crime black on white crime. violence, black on white violence in the United States is way, way higher than white on black violence. Way can higher. You, can you prove that? Uh, yeah, we can look. We can look at the statistics. I mean, have, are you, do you think the FBI is lying? I mean, presumably you think well, the FBI is think think uh, uh, fraudulent. Well, you think the FBI. Are liars because you think that they should not have locked Trump up. You can't ask my position about, we know your position about the FBI because they was wrong for locking Trump up. That's what you said. So I mean, they can't co collect statistics accurately. Um, the fact that they locked Trump up was, uh, is, is irrelevant to that. Uh, no, no, Trump, the individual is irrelevant, but your logic is relevant. Your logic is that they were wrong for locking Trump up. That's that's the FBI's thought process. That's them gathering information. That's them finding enough evidence that they feel they can arrest Trump. You feel they're wrong about. But you want me to believe that they're right about gathering information that would show that blacks kill more people than whites. Now, I don't have an issue looking up any statistics. I just want to make sure I consistently show the hypocrisy in what you're saying. You can't have it's not, it's not hypocrisy. It's like, for example, I view the ADL as an enemy. But when the ADL does studies, um, I, I believe that the statistics in their studies because it profits mm -hmm. them to have objective analysis. Like they they have um, they they need to collect data to accurately uh, represent what they're doing in order to kind of uh, engage in you know, their internal policies and assess the land. And so the FBI also needs to have objective data. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just, it's just, again, the empirical veracity of, of the uh, FBI statistics can be independently verified. Mm -hmm. So I, again, I don't have a problem going through them. Like I said, I just want to point out the hypocrisy. Now here's why I actually could we stone the white house when George Floyd got killed and black people went down there for a protest, was there armed guards, armed people there to make sure that they didn't storm? Uh, presumably, hopefully. I ain't no presumably. I'm just asking you yes or no. 
If I'm at you, well, now, I mean, you know, I, I walked you down. It's out. You're, you're, I mean, I mean, I'm from Australia. You're asking me all these like specific details well, about America, don't, don't, specific don't events. Now you want to run back to it. You want to go back to the shrimp? Well, I'm back. not running back, but I mean, you 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 want to instead of talking about instead of talking about a general uh, trend that mm-hmm. we can observe through uh, like some kind of objective metric, you want right. to pick specific instances. And then you want to d- debate like the specifics of, or oh, when this specific event happened, what happened? And then you're comparing apples and oranges, comparing the Floyd uh, riots to January 6th uh, and so on. And it's like, this is not really, we're not actually talking about anything objective here. Now you're just cherry picking two uh, specific examples and comparing them to one another. I mean, we could go, I could go and cherry pick a bunch of examples too. We're not actually advancing ourselves to any kind of objective survey of the land. First of all, we should define what do you even mean by crime? Are you just talking about uh, things like murders and rapes and this kind of thing? Or are you kind of alleging a, 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 that there are, there are other crimes that are worse than this, that we, we want to kind of expand the purview of the conversation to? Do you want to start talking about things like slavery and colonization? Is, is that way, what you're driving at? Is that the specific form of white crime that you're trying to persecute here? Um, I think you should make your position more clear and move us into territory where we can have a more objective discussion. So now I'm going to read a definition of crime and then I just want to respond to what you just said. All right. So this is the definition of crime because the debate title says black crime versus white crime. It says in ordinary language, a crime is an unlawful act punishable, me, punishable by a state or authority. The term crime does not in modern criminal law have any simple or universally accepted definition. Those statutory definitions have been provided for certain purposes. So as you bring up, do we want to talk about rape? Do we want to talk about murder? Those are crimes, but racketeering is crime. Um, drugs is a crime. Abort for me, um, some people might not think abortion is a crime, but I think abortion is a crime. But when you say so, but when you say that um, I'm bringing up these uh, isolated incidences, what I'm pointing out is the hypocrisy. I'm pointing out that you can commit what is clearly a criminal act. What they did on January 6th, storming the White House, that's illegal by any other measure if it's someone else. And so I asked you, if black people did the same thing, would they be able to get away with it, of which you said yes. And so all I used was a protest as an example, where they weren't storming the castle. And even though it was just a protest, they still had the National Guard out there fully armed to make sure that black people did not storm or get inside the White House. But when it was the Proud Boys, they opened the doors for them. One security guard... Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's an obvious explanation for this that is uh, offering itself, though, which is that uh, you probably couldn't allow a bunch of black people into the Capitol and they would walk around uniformly. You, know, you have white people. You look at the white people walking through the Capitol and they're all like... They're, they're walking in an orderly fashion... Um, they're, they're engaging in very civil behavior, but if you have a bunch of like wild Negroes with that are armed, you know, it would be a bloodbath. Um, and so, you know, th- there is a double standard for a reason because there is a difference in behavior between these two groups. When I tell, um, you, when I tell you that the white man is a devil, the Bible speaks, so I mean that like he said they were peaceful. It was illegal. Whether blacks or whites did it. It was illegal whether you peaceably storm the castle or go in there with violence. It's still illegal. And you are justifying their crime, which is why I said y'all's are worse because you, like, if a black man kills another black man, if a black man kills another white man, he gets locked up for it. He gets found guilty of it. He goes to jail. A white man does the same thing to a black person. He does not get found. Like what happened to George Floyd? That you that, cop, that cop getting found uh, guilty. That's like the anomaly. We have so many examples. <laughs> like when you think about it, Emmett Till's, <laughs> Emmett Till's the woman that lied on Emmett Till was allowed to live her days free when she should have been put in jail. Meanwhile, if a Jewish person, which I don't like Jews at all, just want to make a point. But if the Jewish person finds some 90-year-old German or 99-year-old German 
They just locked up some 92 year old German. That nigga, excuse me, he was in a damn wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> he was in a damn wheelchair. And they took his ass and locked him up. Emmett Till's liar was allowed to live peaceably, even though the earth knew that she lied. So when we say which one is worse, is now I'm giving you my position because you said when I'm talking about crime, what am I talking about? When it comes to which one is worse, we're going to find as we have this dialogue that both sides have committed rape, murder, theft, larceny, racketeering. Both sides have done it. There's one that's a father to it. There's one that's a son to it. There's one that has mastered it to the point that they don't even hold themselves guilty. Even if you think about the way that you're answering, you will not say the Proud Boys were guilty for storming the DC, Washington, D.C. You said they was in an orderly fashion. They didn't destroy nothing. When they trying to get records, they was trying to get records. Well, my position is one, you know, my position is one of political loyalty. I mean, the right. essence of the political is the distinction between friend and enemy. And mm-hmm. the storming of the Capitol is not like an interpersonal event. Like if somebody, um, if some Negro does a drive-by shooting on his fellow Negroes on the, in the streets of Chicago, this is mm-hmm. not a political event, right? There's nothing political about it. The storming of the Capitol in January 6th, however, is a political event. Meaning? That's, can, can you explain in detail, like not? Yeah, like, yeah. Well, I mean, obviously they were there. They were there to uh, to provide uh, a kind of uh, civic opposition to so what? Like, to contest the election. Down. Well, I, I mean, yeah. Well, I'm allow me. Down. Allow me to explain. Allow me to explain. Thank if you, you, if you don't mind giving me some uh, giving me some uh, time here on the mic. mic. I'm gonna mute my um, Now, January sixth is a political situation. These people ha- had the belief. I think a, a justifiable belief that the election was stolen, that it was rigged. Um, and January 6th was an expression of their opposition to a political event. It was, an, it was a political contest. And, it, and, and so their, their actions are therefore understandable within that political context. And so my loyalty to the right, uh, therefore, will mean I don't even care if the right commits crimes insofar as it serves their political goals. I simply don't because I believe in the virtue of their victory and the necessity of their victory such that um, I don't care what they have to do to achieve that victory. So and I, that's my position. I do not care whatsoever about what, you know, whether this or that or whatever explanation, I will defend them no matter what they do. In fact, I wish that they committed more crimes. I wish that they were more aggressive in, in how they go after the enemy because the left goes after the right far more effectively and aggressively and bends the law to their will far more aggressively and effectively than the right, which is why the right constantly loses. Um, and I would like to see that stop because left-wing victory means more immigrants. It means uh, unsafer cities, uh, less persecution of criminals, it, uh, you know, in, in the kind of conventional sense of the term, you know, violent criminals and so on. It means... Um, you know, the, the, the proliferation of degeneracy of this transgender nonsense, abortion, gay marriage, etc., and And these things are far greater evils than any specific, uh, uh, you know, contextual uh, unlawful practice that the right may engage in in order to kind of contest uh, their leadership for power. So on the principle of the greater good, I think right wing victory is, uh, is so important and is so just and is so moral in a general sense that any kind of specific crimes that are required in order to get the right wing into a position of power uh, are justifiable. Um, Go ahead, Captain. Yes. This man just said he don't care what crimes they commit for the greater good, which remember when I said there's a father and then there's a son. So, and if, uh, to make it plainly, if you don't understand what I mean when I say there's a father and there's a son, you like Trump because Trump is a gangster and y'all respect gangsters. When the gangsters come over here and establish, when the Italians come over here and they, you know, they get glorified. Every gangster gets glorified. Just like Trump gets glorified because his mantra was make America great again. 
But some every time I hear like "Make America Great Again," I just see chains and shit. I just see chains. I just see my, like this or something like that. But that's for y'all. That that's all good. That's why for you, that makes it wonderful because your dynamic, like you said, is your political party. So whatever will make your political party grow, that's what you're about. The problem that black people suffer from is we have been taught to look at you as the father or you as the God we worship. You gave us white Jesus. Now I'm going to go a little spiritual and I'm going to come right back to it. You gave us white Jesus. You gave us your version of the Bible, which they call the slave Bible. You brought us over here in chains, took away our identity, created us as animals. If I could just read this one citation real fast. I want to read you this citation. This is a book called The Black Image in the White Mind, written by George Fredrickson. It was written from 1817 to like 1914. This is page 34 of that book. I just want to read this excerpt. It says, a worse evil to the slave than the cruelty he sometimes endures is the moral degradation that results from his condition. Falsehood, theft, licentiousness are the natural consequence of his situation. He goes to excess in eating and drinking and animal pleasure for he has access, excuse me, he has no access to any higher pleasures. A man cannot be an animal without sinking below an animal. A brutal man is worse than a brute. An animal cannot be more savage and more greedy than the law of his nature allows. But there seems to be no limit to the degradation of a man. Slavery is the parent of vices. Why do I bring that up? As we were, as we watched y'all prosper through murder, rape, bloodshed, of whether you want to talk about the Native Indians, if you want to talk about the Aborigines in the uh, con continent that you're in, or Australia, no matter what you want to talk about, your reputation has been murder. Your reputation has been slavery. And we've been forced to look up to you. So now the same way you respect gangsters, now that same neighborhood in Chicago or that same neighborhood everywhere else, who are they emulating? The people that they've seen prosper. How did they prosper? They prospered by affiliation, which is the part of your wood. They prospered by murder. They prospered by drugs. They prospered by bloodshed. And so they're emulating. What we come is to speak against your evil. Like you notice when I came in, I said for us, we teach the truth to blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians to give them their identity, to stop loving you because loving you means we kill each other because that's what you taught us. If we stop loving you and be with our own, we would not kill each other. So you can't say that their crime is worse than yours when you taught them that murder is the way. You taught them that drug dealing was the way. You taught them all of that. And even today in 2023, you don't care what crimes your party commits for the greater good. Is that not what that same cat that, uh, that learned from y'all in the ghettos of Chicago going to say? This is my block. I got to represent my party on my block. The worst lesson we ever learned from y'all is to how to murder. But you taught us that. You. By, the, by the way, your audio is going up and down. Now, it usually fixes itself within a few seconds, so it, it might not be that big a deal, but I just wanted to mention that. It gets a little hard to hear. It trails off, and then it comes back pretty quick, so it's not unbearable, but I just wanted to mention that. Um, okay, well, I think I, I'll now, offer some a, a response Yeah, go ahead. Uh, to what he's saying while he, while he fixes his audio. Um, the, 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 this debate is between which is worse, black crime or white crime. Now, this is a qualitative argument. Which has a greater or lesser quality? I think my opponent has just made an incredibly uh, brilliant argument for my position, because what he has just told us is that our crimes are so much more magnificent. Our crimes create nations. Our crimes create civilization. His crimes uh, what do they do? They, they, they're just gangbangers. They're cheap imitations of white crimes, apparently. Apparently, white crimes, we are the real progenitors. We have the truly magnificent and glorious criminal acts, which are foundational to Western civilization. And he has the kind of... Uh, what, 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 have black, what does black crime ultimately achieve? What, what, are the, what are the consequences of black crime? It is uh, proliferating crack, random you know, street attacks... Uh, 
you know, random, uh, you know, isolated incidences of gangbanging and rape. Um, these things produce no uh, real value whatsoever. There's no value that emerges from black crimes. Black crimes are not capable of generating uh, societies of magnificence. Uh, like he alleges that the white crimes such as slavery, colonization, etc., have generated. And so this to me is, is deeply ironic because, uh, you know, we can, I can contest, I could have an argument contesting whether these things are actually crimes that he alleges that the white people have committed. But if I accept his argument on his premises for the sake of discussion, um, and we just look at the outcomes, you know, I was just saying, well, yes, like if, if, if Republican partisans, if right wing partisans commit crimes for the advancement of our political ideology and political objectives, then I support it. Why is that? It's precisely because of this, because they will ultimately lead to a better, more just, more magnificent society and civilization. And that's what I have. I have a civilizational consciousness. That's what the white man has. That's why we created the modern world. That's why our civilization is the greatest and most glorious civilization in world history, because that is our mentality. We aren't interested in these kind of petty. We don't need like Anglo white people don't need to become gangsters. We don't need to become drug dealers in the mundane sense since and, and, traffic whores and uh you know drugs and this kind of thing we're interested in a far higher objective a far more noble and more glorious objective and so that in and of itself i think really substantiates my position as victorious in this debate when you so what you're saying is your crime yeah. now you're a little quiet yeah yeah your audio you're, is low i don't know if it's you have like um Noise uh, cancellation on. That could be it too. Uh, let me let me see here. If you click the settings on the Hangout, um, maybe if you turn off the noise cancellation, it might help. Uh, if you go to the, uh, you see the three dots down at the bottom. Yeah, I see it. Click that, then click settings, and then on audio, turn off noise cancellation. Um, okay, what about now? Does it sound any better? It sounds a little bit better. Yeah. Let me see. I'm gonna. It ain't a way to turn the volume up or down, right? No, no I don't think so in there, but you sound better now. So I, okay. I just, yeah, yeah, it sound fine now. Okay, all right. Um, it's interesting because remember, this debate is which one is worse. So your definition of worse is which crime gets committed that does not benefit that people. Am I correct? Yes or no? Yeah, well, I mean, we're, we're trying to determine it qualitatively. So what is the objective? What is the outcome of, this uh, of, of the acts? No, of, I mean, you're alleging, you're calling things crimes. Now, we could have another I'm debate, and we'll probably no, get I'm into this. Question. No, I'm asking. No, you. yeah, I'll let, me, let me clarify for you. Okay. So we could, we could probably get into a, a certain portion of this debate where I, mm -hmm. where I will contest your definition of the white man's it's activities as quote-unquote crimes. But That's accepting your definition. You but accepting... Accepting, accepting your definition for the sake of, of argument after you alleged th these criminal acts, I said, I well, what is the outcome? You said they were crimes. Don't mm -hmm. lie on me now. You said they were what crimes. What do you mean? You're talking about January 6th, for example. Right. right? That was the example you used. You said that was a, that was a criminal act. Right. And, uh, and I said, no, well, I think it's justifiable it's because of ultimately right. so you what is the motivation? Right. What is the objective? The objective is not simply self-advancement. I'm going to right. sell drugs in order to become more wealthy because yeah, I can't get a real job in a real career because I didn't go to college. So I'm going to become a gang banger. Right. That's not a noble objective, right. but political victory of the right wing in the most powerful country in the world. Right. That's a noble that's goal. Losing. The country that you y'all are losing. Y'all losing the country right now, right? Can you hear me or no? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. White, white people are, um, no, in no, a bad no. Position you, can't, in the United States. you can't say white people are losing because black people ain't winning. So you can't say white people are losing. But what you Jews are winning, man. I thought you were red pill <laughs> on that. Listen, now, now, if you start talking about them, we on the same page. Like, <laughs> we, that's why. Listen, that's why Ralph loved me because we on the same page on them. I hate them way more. Yeah, your you, Jews use your people uh, against us as a battering ram against us. It's not. It's not 
there is no black advancement that is really being procured by the Democrats. Uh, blacks are just a weapon, a bioweapon against whites. Uh, so I support what you're doing in uh, creating black anti-Semitism. I think it's a positive development that serves our interests. Is my mic low? Yeah, it's low again, actually. I, I don't know why. Um, but I don't have thing. Let me, let me just check my mic. Um, yeah, maybe check the mic volume in the yeah in the control panel uh, of the sound settings. Um, but yeah, it does it does get low. I don't know why it's doing that. Uh, my apologies, chat. You know, it's things like this happen sometimes during a during a live debate. I'm not immune to it either. Uh, what about now? Does it yes, sound yes? It now? sounds way better now. Yeah. Yeah, the damn volume was at like five. Yeah, yeah, it sounds <laughs> way better now. The volume was at like five, and I'm trying to talk to Joel. I'm like, damn, he's talking over me. The so-called like, Jews did that for sure. All right, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> what I was saying, Joel, when it comes to the so-called Jew, we're going to be on the same page. I don't agree that they use us. I think both of y'all use us equally. There is no one white person using us more than the other. We get used by both. You said that y'all don't sell drugs. Y'all are the greatest drug dealers that ever exist on the planet. Y'all import the drugs. You make sure the drugs get in. That's the CIA, the FBI, Cohen, whoever you want to call it, you allow countries to... Matter of fact, marijuana is legal today. Because of y'all, that's not us. That's because of y'all. That has nothing to do with us at all. We don't control that. And when we talk about the crime, here's why I say y'all are worse. We didn't need crime to become great. In the beginning of my statement, I said, we come to correct. You have to identify what the root is and then provide a solution. Our, us being in love with white people is why we sell drugs and kill. Because when we wasn't in love with you, we built our own cities without your assistance. The greatest time we've ever had and the greatest threat y'all have ever had in America was watching black people build great cities without Which your cities? Wall Street, Rosewood, Seneca Village, Paradise in Detroit. I mean, I can go on and on. You know, there's never been an airstrike in America until y'all flew airplanes over Tulsa, Oklahoma to bomb Black Wall Street. And that city flourished. And you know what? They didn't have to kill each other to do it. They didn't even have to kill you. They didn't have an issue with you. If black cities are so great, how come white people move the hell away from black people at every possible opportunity? Back then or now? What time are you talking I mean, about? You got to be smart I mean, now. You, yeah, remember, remember, when you speak, I respond to exactly what you're saying. So when I'm responding to what you're saying, I'm showing you what the problem is. The problem is we're trying to emulate you. You're a murderer. You're good at it. If murdering makes you great, you will murder. If stealing makes you great, you'll steal. If shitting in the president's house, you'll shit in the president's house like y'all did. You said they were so civilized when they walked in there. They were shitting in there. Chasing women. Anyway, but if we separate that thought process from you guys, then we will build. We just don't have to kill to do it. So, so what I'm hearing from you, if you may let me interject, is that you think that the white man is a bad influence on your people. And so my response to that is, if you feel that way, which is a natural way to feel, all races will feel like this about other races because we have different mentalities. If you understand the biology of race, mm -hmm. um, if you look at the at racial differences where they manifest most in the genetics, it's genetics that pertains to neurophysiology. Mm -hmm. And so the, the kinds of uh, elements of our nature that code for our behavior, for right. our way of thinking, these right. are the greatest differences between the races, not our physical appearance, which is obviously right. distinct as well, but that's actually lesser. And so, and so it would be much better for your people, surely, to live in your own country with your own people away from us. Well, just back up, back up a little bit. You said something about the looks. What did you say? I said if you look at the genetic modeling, the mm -hmm. genes that code for different physical appearance diverge yeah. less between the races than the genes that code for different neurophysiological attributes. Right. And you're saying that to say what? My point is that the greatest differences between the races are in our behaviors, our attitudes, our mentalities uh, from a kind of physical would standpoint. Our, would you say our thought process? Yeah, yeah, our thought yeah, process, yeah, exactly, our way of interpreting the world. Yeah, y'all will see if people trying to be at peace with you and you, your thought process, we're going to kill them. Whereas we just no, well, no let's I mean, my current thought process when it comes to your people is you, you have you your own continent. 
Go what nuts. We'll stay out. Mean, I'm quite happy to stay the hell out of Africa and leave say, it to you guys. You say our own continent. Hey, Ralph, I don't think nobody ever studies like my position at all. We are not African. Just because you live on a continent, you know, white people have been in Africa for thousands of years too. You wouldn't call them Africans. You would just call them white people in Africa. So just because melanated, I'm using that blanket term because maybe that's a word you understand. Just because melanated people are on a continent does not mean that they're from a continent. When you say go back to Africa, there's 50 countries in Africa. So where do you go? Yeah, that's but the majority, the overwhelming majority of black people, you know, more the overwhelming majority of black people are in what, Africa already. Calories, so if we're going to separate our peoples, it's the logical place. Gentlemen, one, one at a time, one at a time. It's more callous for you to say go back to Africa than it is for you to say, maybe we should stop murdering. All right, now go it's ahead. It's for you. Now go ahead, Joel, and, and say what you Well, No, but the point, the point that I'm making is you're alleging all these things about the white man, and I could try and I'm not um, alleging yeah, anything. Provide, my, wait, go provide ahead, all my counter arguments. But the reality is, is that I understand, because I understand racial differences, that you as a black man, as a proud black man, you seem... Uh, like an intelligent individual, as far as black people go, um, you have a, you have pride in your identity, said, and you're a, you, you have a kind of noble mentality, which is which is said, not a I bad thing. Say, Joel, can you say? And so, you, can you just say what you said about me? I didn't hear that part. I said, I said, you seem like an intelligent individual. You're proud. You're you're you know you're proud of your identity. You you're very proud about who you are. You have a very strong sense of yourself, right? And that's a good thing. I think that's a noble thing to be. And so what I'm saying is that I will never convince you, just like you will never convince me as a, uh, as a white racialist of any of your nonsense. That, that's what it, it just sounds like nonsense in my ears. So, Likewise. so, 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 about so and that's because we have totally different mentalities. We are different peoples. We are proud peoples of different races. And so I view the influence of your people, your culture over my people as negative. You view, view it the same way in reverse. And so what I'm saying is, is that then the solution would probably be for us to have our own separate political uh, organizations, our own separate societies, our own separate countries, where you can have your country where it's entirely geared toward what's great for black people, advancing your people and your interests, and the entire culture is dominated by your mentality and way of life, and the same for me. All right, now go ahead, Captain. I appreciate it. The conversation is not about um, me convincing you or you convincing me, because you're right. I'm not going to convince you of any. You're not going to walk away from this and think I want to make black people great. You're not. And neither am I going to walk away and Joel convince me to make white people. That's not the debate is not about who can convince the other. The debate is about which crime is worse. And so what I'm simply demonstrating is that when we emulate you, you guys commit crimes worse than us. Your crimes leave other nations in shambles. Your position is that you're fine with that, though, because you get the rule. That's your position, correct? No, incorrect. My position no, is... You, 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 wait, wait. Uh, well, I, can, I can clarify my position for you and why it relates to my previous point. Wait, wait, hold the on, reason hold why on. I made my previous point is because if we go back to the beginning on, when hey, you Joel, gave a definition of crime... Good. Hey, Joel, it doesn't work good. Uh, just let me finish. I just uh, wanted to get you... A right, I'll, let, I'll let you finish. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, you're not letting me. I just stopped you. So All right, sorry. gentlemen. Go ahead. Go ahead, Kevin. <laughs> I'm sorry. So in this debate, the debate is which crimes are worse. So when you say it's good because we win, you still not taking away that it's worse because look at the devastation that you leave behind. That's why when I brought up what the Aboriginal people went through in Australia, when y'all came over there and you murdered them, what the native Indians went through over here, when you came here and murdered them, when you exported slaves when Africans decided to sell black people because they're not the same, look at the nations that you left and what you did to them. Even the so-called Jewish man that you speak about, he's no different. The only difference is he chose to fight against you. The reason why y'all hate Jewish people is not because they're Jewish. It's because they won't share. It's because they take their power and keep their power to themselves. If they ever shared their power with you guys, you would love them. Because they are in power. You yourself think that they make black people do this. They run the Diamond District. They run Hollywood. They got all manner of evil going on, but they would not associate with you guys. So the argument is not about what you benefited from. 
The argument is which one is worse and raping, murdering, no matter what race it is, the difference between you and I, I don't think that we should murder anybody for no reason. If someone's coming to harm you, defend yourself. That's one thing. But to go in and rape and pillage a people just to take their land, that's horrible. So when you say which one is worse, there is nobody worse than you guys. I'm done. Now go ahead, Joel. Here's a, so, so the reason why I made a, a discuss before about the differences in mentalities between the races is because when you, when you gave it earlier, you gave it a, a definition of crime. And you said, well, crime is fundamentally defined as illegal or unlawful with respect to a particular state order, a particular uh, existing government and its determinations. Um, and so what I'm saying is that according to you, the, the value set that you have, um, the only way in which to guarantee that within a body of law is to have your own countries dominated by your own people where your identity, your mentality, your values become definitive over the um, actual institution of laws within that territory. Uh, they come to dominate the government. An ideology which is a reflection of your biological character and reality is manifest and your racial, whatever, spiritual, whatever um, characteristics, cultural characteristics dominate the political system um, that you live under. Uh, now, you will always find it disagreeable if that's not, the, if that's not the situation. Everyone will. That's why multiculturalism or multiracial societies or whatever is such a mess, um, precisely because of that, because we will never see eye to eye on so many issues. Now, when it comes to you alleging that I'm okay with murder, I'm not uh, okay with murder um, whatsoever. I mean, that's a ridiculous uh, proposition. Um, there is a difference between murder and killing in the act of war. In an act of war, hmm. it's not murder because hmm. you're engaging in a extra, you're engaging essentially in a kind of state mandated uh, uh, activity uh, to defend your political order against external enemies, against people who do not fall within the paradigm of the government that you live under and the state that you live under. And so they don't have the rights of citizenship. Uh, they don't have the rights that are kind of determined to your um, the people as, that are part of your political community because they are of, of a hostile political community. And, it's, and uh, it, when you engage in a war between two different groups, ultimately it is a battle over uh, to defend your way of life. There is a perception that the enemy, if it's a just war, now I agree that there are some unjust wars, but if it's a just war, you are fighting the enemy because you perceive the enemy as a threat to your way of life, as a threat to your political order as such. And so any act of killing that you engage in during a state of war is an act in defense of the law, of the law of your territory, not an act against and contrary to the law. That's why I'm not a pacifist. As a Catholic, I hold the just war theory. Um, what does that mean? Well, that law, uh, war, it can, in, in many cases, can be justified. If you have an aggressive party, which yes. you, you can't negotiate with, then war is justified, um, an external enemy, right? And then, you know, what are you supposed to do? Not defend yourself and not defend your political, uh, your political community, your political order, your nation against external threats? That would be preposterous. Um, anyone who, who holds that principle will be defeated by history. Uh, by people who do defend their way of life and assert themselves. So, um, now, so that's the distinction. Okay. Now, I, when it comes to some of the stuff you said, yeah, I'll, I'll just finish this okay. point and then I'll wrap it all together. So my point is, is that the things that you are alleging to be white crimes, and we haven't even really gotten to contesting the specifics. We can probably go into that later in the discussion. Um, what I'm saying, you're grouping together, you know, you're saying that basically it is in our nature, we have a devilish nature, the way in which we go about organizing our societies is fundamentally evil and immoral and so on from your perspective. And so what I'm saying is that from my perspective, the outcome of uh, us creating our own nations and running our own nations is magnificence. I love the civilization that we create. I love the kind of societies we generate. I love the kind of politics we try to assert. I think our society, our civilization historically, not anymore now it's generated, but historically was the most noble and magnificent civilization, Western civilization in world history. And the actions that were taken to generate it, therefore um, carry 
that as their justification. They carry that as, as they are contributions to the generation of this magnificent, civilized, modern Western civilization. Um, and so that gives them a higher quality. That gives them a higher standing than what, have, what, what has black crime really contributed to. So when we're talking about which, what, you know, what is the outcomes of black crime, what great civilizations have come from black crime, what great changes in government, what, 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 new, uh, what, what new advances have come from black crime? I don't see any. So black crime, therefore, is qualitatively worse because black crime does not create anything that is great. It leads only to... I don't know, just general civic decay, the breakdown of public order, degeneracy, uh, and so on. There is nothing noble that emerges from it under the definitions that we're playing with here. Now, I'll let you respond, and then maybe we can get into some of the specifics if you want to start talking about the history of colonialism and, and so on, and we can debate those. Well, I'm fine with whatever that is, but I want to point out, well, first, a just quick yes or no. Do you believe that America, run by whites, targets the black race yes or no what do you, what do you mean by targets I meaning do things specifically to target the black race in a negative way yes or no um an america that was run, when it was run by the white man previously talk about 20 any run by a white man a day when has america not been run no. by a white man wait no america is run by jews Wait, oh, wait. But Joe Biden, he's not a Jew, though, right? So called Jew, right? Joe Biden doesn't run America. He's a senile retard. Okay, what about, but Trump, he, it, was, it was white when Trump was in it. Just four years ago. Trump didn't white. run America. He got deposed. He got overthrown by the people who actually run America. He didn't get the, he got, he didn't complete his four years? He was barely able to do anything his entire he administration. He was obstructed he, in every possible way. He didn't way. complete his four years, yes or no? But do you seriously think that the president yes actually no. has control yes of the no. government? Can you hear yes or no? Did he complete his four years, yes or no? You're asking me a question, a rhetorical question. It's, Why would I honor it with an answer, answer when it's obvious that he completed his four years, oh, but it's irrelevant it's to the point? Who ago, really was, runs America? Is it the wait, president? Wait, this is wait, like high school wait, civic wait, shit. No, but it's actually far more complicated. Political power is far more complicated ago, than who's the president. Well, four years ago, it was white. That's why. And you know how you know... It was also, like, when Obama was president, was the black man running America? Hell no. Yeah, hell well, there no. you go. So, therefore, your argument <laughs> is retarded. The difference, with, the difference with that is that Obama is one African. What is it? Was it 52 presidents by now? Was it 52 or 53? But 52 or 50. Let's say, I'm going to just say 52. So, one African who's not our people, Obama is not my people, but one African out of 51 other presidents did not now make America black. It doesn't. You know, like when God says other nations as a drop of a bucket, like a, a drop of, from a bucket, does it matter? The reason why I ask you that question is because white people love to say, well, if this country's so bad, you should move out. And the reason why I ask you, do you specifically target black people? Because East Indians don't have these conversations. Arabs, even though the Arabs so-called made the towers fall, they don't have to have these conversations. Chinese don't have to have these conversations. No other race has to have these conversations because no other race is targeted in America except us by you. I also want to point out your hypocrisy. First, you said you didn't, you didn't want to justify whatever crimes are committed as long as it came to the greater good. But then you just gave a soliloquy. When we do these crimes, we get this. When y'all do these crimes, you get this. As if the results of your crime make your crime better. You got to pick a side. Either you're with it or you're not. Because you keep flip-flopping on that point. And I'm you not flip-flopping at all. It just seems like you don't have the ca capacity for abstract thinking to understand I, I, the I rhetorical device that I'm employing. I have abstract thinking. But in the blood sport, you have to be focused on the debate. The debate is... Yeah, I am focused on this okay. debate. And I'm no winning with zero preparation debate. because your arguments are weak. I, I didn't prepare. I just cut a laptop on. I just knew you was from Australia. So I know y'all killed a lot of aboriginals out there. And this argument. Well, we, can, we can talk about the aboriginals if you want, but we can. We do you want to move onto that, to such, onto that subject? I just want to finish. You also mentioned how my second yes or no question. Are we at, are you at war today? Are we at war? Who? No, no. Are you at war today? You mentioned that in a time of war, 
you know, it wouldn't be murder. It would be killing, which I agree with. I, I agree with you on that. So are we at, are you at war today? Um, no, war has not been declared yet. Okay, no problem. Perfect. So now my next statement, you had made a point to say, I'm just trying to grab it real fast. You had made a point. Um, God damn it. You had made a point about, um, give me one second. About, God, I lost it. So we can yield. I lost, I lost the point right there. We can go to the next subject. That's okay. Uh, go Would ahead, Joel. And he did mention like debate, Aboriginals. Would you like to debate the uh, oh, Aboriginal yeah. thing? Because you keep bringing that up. You did bring it up. I'm putting it to me personally. Joel, I got, I'm glad you said that. You made a point to bring up that you were a Roman Catholic, correct? Correct. So on the subject of crimes, <laughs> which one is worse? <laughs> I mean, goddamn. How many Roman Catholics molest kids and destroy kids because they was molested? And so now the, Ro- and the Roman Catholic... They don't send them to jail. They put them in the Roman Catholic Witness Protection Program. They send them to Arizona to the Archdiocese down in Arizona to send them to another place. Now, those are your own people. They sleep with your own your own race, molesting little boys because they believe you can't have sex. I'll never join nothing where a priest can't have. I'm a priest myself, and I'm going to have sex with women. <laughs> they don't want to have sex with yeah, women. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I, I understand that the Negro has no capacity for um, restraint. Uh, probably has no capacity to control my dick, uh, to be able to engage in uh, celibacy for a higher spiritual purpose. I mean, that's quite clear. How much control y'all don't have? Y'all have no control of your dick that you won't put it in a pussy, but you'll put it in a little boy's ass. Right. You'll put it in a little boy's mouth. So when you talk about crimes, the Roman Catholic Church is the most disgusting thing that has ever been called of God. Right. There's nothing. And when you think about God, first of all, the Pope is considered God on earth. So when you're talking about... No, he isn't. Things, when you talk about God, The Pope is not considered God on earth. That's not true. About, if we're talking about God... Worshiping God, obeying God, keeping the commandments of God. Tell me where God ordained fucking little boys. Obviously, I oppose. I, I would want all pedophiles immediately executed. What do you do? No, not just any pedophiles. Your bishops. Your archbishops. Yeah, I think they should all, all. Every bishop who actually is a pedophile should be executed. What, what do you do? Do you go out and speak against the Roman Catholic Church? I, I speak against uh, exactly. the pedophilia. Yes, I, I do. I, I do speak against no, pedophilia no. frequently. So it's quite it's, it's it's such a basic thing. Obviously, I oppose that. Top of the Roman Catholic Church to the bottom. Yeah, there's problems. There's problems no, in the no, church. No, no, no. I think I, the, I, I think it's overstated. The but nevertheless, there are problems in the church. Is, I'm not talking about problems. Let's say if you have an organization. Let's say you got a 50 man organization, just a 50, and you put rules in place that they're supposed to adhere to. Anybody can break those rules. We agree, right? Anybody can break them, right? Like you can have rules and it's up to you to exact a punishment, right? Correct. They don't punish them for molesting kids. They just relocate them to molest more kids. And that's your spiritual belief. Your spiritual belief of God comes from niggas that have no control of their dick. You try to say black people don't have control of their my, dick. No, my belief comes from Christ, my from relationship with Christ, and the fact that there are uh, pedophiles uh, that have infiltrated the church and have used John. the church to, to uh, you know, facilitate their pedophilia does not mean that my he faith was in when he was saying is, when black is, is, is in any way impacted. Dicks, but then when I point out how white people or your priests are putting their dicks in little boys, do they have control of their dicks? Because they're not supposed Clearly to have sex. Not. They don't have, they're not supposed to have sex, period. Correct. And that's how you know that that's demonic. Because when they get the urge to have sexual Acts. It clearly is they pedophilia is clearly they demonic, they but but the, I mean, but the idea that all Catholic priests are pedophiles is just r- ridiculous. I tell you what, we can, take it off, we, can, we can take it off of them. You know, the, it's it's called the Roman Catholic. So if we was to go back to Rome or Greek days, they had something called pederasty. You know what pederasty is, right? I mean, I thought we were going to talk about the Aboriginals. Now you're going on about, about pederasty and ancient ancient crime. Rome. Like, what is this? We talk about crimes. We know what pederasty is, right? 
If you want to look at the statistics, let me look, let me look it up. Let me look it up. Let me look. African Americans are more homosexual than white Americans. So if you want to look at who's the greatest sodomite, who's fucking more niggas in the ass, it's niggas. Okay. Hey, look at him getting to his feelings. When they say the N word, when they say the word nigga, listen, you can say nigga all you want because every time I have a conversation and white people say nigga, it's always online. It's never in my face. So saying nigga, that's not going to make me go crazy. Well, you keep saying it. So if you can say it, why can't I say it? You can say, listen, America has freedom of speech. So you using that word is not going to, I know his tactic was now pull out the N word. I'm going to call him a nigga. That's going to get him thrown off. No, nigga. We're going to read the definition of pederasty. That's what we about to do. Pederasty, sexual activity involving a man and a boy in his youth. And the Romans and the Greeks practiced this vehemently. Well, they would take that little boy and he was the one that he would have sex with. Like in that movie 300, they used to make the women dress as the goddamn centurion because he didn't even want to have sex with his woman. He wanted to have sex with the little boy. Till the little boy got about 16, 17 years old. And then now you throw him away and get another little boy. And so that's where the Roman Catholic Church, who claim they're of God, which they're not, that's satanic. They're founded off of that same principle. Remember, we're talking about crime. And you already said pedophilia is wrong. So is pederasty wrong? Is pederasty wrong? Come on, man. Type the keyboard. Yeah, obviously it's wrong. I mean, what even is what even is this? Like you're just wasting my time with this now, nonsense. Now, is this not a crime? Isn't well, it what, 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 what even is this? What a society you, are you telling me that black people, there's no black pederasts, the only white people are pederasts? I mean, it's ridiculous. Obviously, never, that's false. I never said that. Black so what's your point? Are, my point is y'all are the fathers of it. Remember, I said you have fathers. I doubt it. You have, you have fathers and you have sons. Y'all are the fathers of pederasty, homosexuality, raping. We learned all of that from you guys. That's my point. Oh, we talk oh about, it's all our fault. When we're talking about crime, that's crime. Well, that's <laughs> society is good. I mean, you have no evidence for that. You're just saying, like, oh, all these terrible things that black people do. Can you prove me it, wrong? It's because they're imitating white can people. You, I mean, like, me it's, it's just baseless. It's well, just baseless when nonsense. Brought us over here, when y'all brought us over here in the transatlantic slave trade, did y'all not stop us from reading? Did y'all not take our spirituality away? Did y'all take so you're telling me back in Africa, there was no homos. I just, Everybody I, in Africa was I, just I, like totally moral. I I Everyone just, was, no one was raping or killing or, they was doing, or sodomizing anybody. Everybody in Africa was just this totally moral, uh, you know, bastion it. of humanity. Oh, wow. And then when, and then they sold their own people into slavery to foreigners. Um, and, and, and then, and then yeah, now it's the white man's fault. Now it's the white man's fault. Oh yeah. It's just ridiculous. Come on, my nigga. Like, don't be like that. Don't be like that. Remember, y'all took away our very identity, our essence of being, and you replaced it with your way of life. So whatever we was doing when we was taken out of the West. Well, that was clearly a mistake. I don't think that that was a good thing. I think it would be much better if you guys hey, were left where hey, you were hey, to have your own way of Joel, life. I'm a, that's what I'm going to call you. I just renamed you. You're going to be called my nigga Joel. That's what you're going to be called. My nigga Joel, you are right. It was not a good idea for y'all to bring us over here. But when you did, no matter what we was listening to, no matter what we was following, no matter what culture, no matter what practices, you guys took it all away. And we only had you to look at. And in observing you, we have watched you molest. We have watched you rape. We have watched you murder. We have watched you steal. So when you say, where do we learn this? And it's all the white man's fault. If you're going to be great and get great off the benefit of slaves, you also, you also have to take the blame for you what people you have been free for almost 200 years and you keep getting mean? worse. What does that mean? What does Not that better. Mean? What does that mean? Let me give you an example of freedom. When the Jewish people destroyed Hitler, killed that nigga. That's another nigga. They killed that nigga. Killed him, destroyed the Germans, got them out the way. You know what they knew? They knew that they couldn't leave the Jewish people um, next to the Germans because there would be no way for them to actually be free and liberate themselves. Black people have never been free. 
We've been told you're no longer slaves, but if we was free, as we was building those cities without bothering you, so now we go, I can give you the list of black cities if you ever want them. As we was going and establishing our black cities, we wasn't bothering y'all. We was fine. Segregation, and I'm pretty sure you agree with this, my nigga, Joel, but with segregation was the best thing that we could ever have because segregation didn't mean that we had no interaction at all, but it did mean that your way of life was your own, our way of life was ours. Your education was your own, our education was ours. We would have to deal with each other economically, of course, but you know what the problem was? Y'all saw us beginning to whoop y'all ass economically, socially, educationally, in every single facet, which is why y'all had to resort back to what you know best, and that's murdering, that's drugs, that's the abortion. That's infiltration. And the only thing I can't defend, the only thing I can't defend is that uppity black niggas decided to decide with y'all. I wish they didn't. I wish. Well, we- you're here talking to me. I'm a, I, I'm a representative of a racialist white viewpoint. Mm-hmm. And if you want to find common ground on That's someone right. who agrees that you guys should have your own <laughs> communities that support segregation, that says you know, we should get rid of the abortion and the drugs mm-hmm. and the crime and live uh, a, no- a noble Christian life. Well, we actually agree on all of those things. So instead of, uh, you know, pointing your finger and blaming, do you think that's kind of interesting that when you talk to people with my viewpoint that actually you could find a common ground that you can't find uh, with a white liberal, you can't you know, find with a Jew. You know, I love Ralph's channel. I love Ralph's channel because the one thing we do agree on is that principle. I'll be surprised sometimes Ralph let me say the shit I get to say. <laughs> Dead ass. Like, like Ralph, Ralph lets me get busy on here. That's why I love coming in here and everything. But now, although we agree on that core principle, does not we mean we ignore the history. So I'm not asking you. So my nigga Joel, I'm not asking you to ignore. Hey, hey, sidebar, Ralph, you know I nickname every white guy every time we have a debate. There's always a nickname. That I have comes. noticed that, yes. So, Joel, your nickname is my nigga Joel. <laughs> That's his nickname. Goes down in the Hall of Fame. So, Joel, when you go on another platform, you're going to say Captain Tazariak of the ISBK. Uh, I'm, I'm not a nigga, unfortunately. So. You are. My nigga Joel. You definitely are. Go yeah, ahead, you but you are my nigga, though. You my nigga. Uh, I think there's only one nigger in this <laughs> conversation. <laughs> All right, <laughs> gentlemen, please bring it down a notch on that one. Go ahead. I'll bring it down. I'll bring go it ahead. Down. You ever seen Training Day, my nigga? So I'm, I'm, all right, that's the last one. That might all be the last right, one. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> so, although we haven't shared that core principle, it does not mean that we negate what this blood sport is about. This is a blood sport. If we was having, let's say, if we ever had another conversation, which I'm not against, right? And we had a conversation where we said, well, let's have a conversation or discussion about common grounds or commonalities or anything that's not a debate. I would gladly have it. It's not a problem. I can go into any space, have any conversation. I don't get offended. But if we having a blood sport about black crime versus white crime, which is worse I have to substan like you. I, I expect you to totally substantiate your position as I mind, and so far I'm clearly substantiating that Roman Catholic. That damn near was like the headshot. That's what that was. That was a headshot because there is no. Well, not head- really. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't a headshot at all. Roman Catholics cannot control their dicks. Now, whether well, you want to say, black, I mean, no, they can't. They, no, they can't. They don't control it. All right, now let him hold on. Um, let's let's let him respond. Go. Oh, yeah. Tell me how they I mean, I mean, the, the Catholicism is a, a religion built around, in many respects, controlling your dick. Now, many people fall <laughs> short of the glory of God because uh, you know man is fallen, and uh, and so on. But nevertheless, that is really the essence of if you're a prop, if you're a true Catholic, if you're actually practicing. And you're a true Catholic. You're not some like weird communist that's 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 uh, laughing as a priest. But you're truly practicing Catholic. Uh, then you're controlling your dick. Yeah, but what I showed was a cultivated culture from the time of the Greeks and the Romans with pederasty that was just transitioning into the Roman Catholic Church. But the Roman Catholic Church provided 
is for all those nasty ass homosexuals, white homosexuals, was an avenue where they can molest kids in the name of what they say is God and then get away with it. And nobody says nothing because I, me speaking personally, like I'm an Israelite. Nobody says nothing. There's there's literally nothing, no scandal that's more talked about than pedophilia in the Catholic Church. It's literally the most nothing mainstream position. Everybody just presumes that it's true, who doesn't even research it because it's proliferated is- as this constant slander and meme throughout our society. And this okay, slander is actually advanced quite often by happen. Jewish sources, Protestant sources, anti-Catholic right. sources. It is actually well overblown. If you look into the statistics, uh-huh. you're far, far more likely to be molested in right. the public school system than you right. are by a Catholic priest. Uh, far, Can you just far tell more. tell me what happens to the Catholic priests when they molest kids? Just Can you just tell me what happens? There are priests that have gone to jail for Who? the crime. <laughs> Who? So I want to know that. Teach me. Teach me this shit. Come on. All right, just or right, I'll just Google it, I guess. Yeah, Google. Uh, but I don't have any. That's probably the best God y'all got. Go ahead and Google that shit, man. Can I still call you my nigga, Joel? Is that I, okay? I wish we would not do that because oh. it leads to another version of that word being said, and I'd rather. Oh, okay. We keep well, it you know, at the he's limit. Being yeah, into the fold, yeah. Bro. I'm just I'm just pulling it up here. You know, West Australian Catholic priest Richard Doyle. He didn't. He he didn't. He didn't. He wasn't a pederast. It was a little girl, apparently. Uh, this is in Australia. I'm just kind of scrolling what through. What about America? What about over here? Oh, well, you know what? I don't want to. I, I strike that back. I don't want to just focus on America. I apologize for that. I, don't want to. I mean, American. I don't know. What? Uh, yeah. What you got? Michigan priest sentenced to prison for sexual abuse of look, second let me, grader. Let me see if I got anything on this. Let me see if I Archdiocese of Detroit. Uh huh. A priest, a priest of the Archdiocese of Detroit, has been sentenced right. for the rape of an elementary student at a Catholic school hmm. attached to the parish. He served as pastor in the mid two thousand. So there you go. There's an example. I mean, There's what you one, think? Like none of these people actually one out of millions. Roman. Well, it's not one out of millions. You asked me to <laughs> find an example. I found you an example. So there you go. But the, the basic the basic premise that, you know, the, the reality is of the world today is that every powerful institution right. is infested with pedophil, uh, pedophiles, with, with all kinds of depraved individuals. We live in a very sick society. You look at government, all government institutions are full of these sick freaks as well. It's not a problem yeah. that is specific who created, to the who created that? Who created that? Oh, so, so now, so, so, so now, 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 white people are only responsible. There, there is plenty of, I'm not of, of pederasty and pedophilia that happens in black communities about, and in Africa as well. It's a universal human problem. Just it's the, not specific to white people. In fact, if you look, a question like, if I, I just Google how many children did the church? Do you have Do you have any kind of data that demonstrates that it's a greater problem in white communities or white societies relative to black communities and black societies? Do you actually have any evidence to support that position? Because if you don't, then we can my just dismiss job, it as just conjecture. No, no. My job is to show how you're more violent. Your job is to show how I'm more violent. I'm, you want me to help you. So, like, if I read this before, come on, my nigga, Joe. I'm, I'm sorry, Ralph. I apologize. Please. More than 450 Catholic clergy members across six Illinois-based, this just six Illinois-based dioceses, 450 sexually abused nearly 2,000 children during a period spanning seven decades. That's just in six, just six Illinois-based dioceses. So now that's 2006 in one state. How many states is it? I don't want to get that wrong. It's 50 states. Yeah. 50 times 2,000 is what? Who knows? 100,000? 100,000 so here, on 100, here's an article here's an article from the Guardian the headline this is from 9 years ago right Pope Benedict the 6th defrocked nearly 400 priests for child abuse mm. priests were defrocked over 2 years for molesting children um Damn. I think he did this you, you know, he was a part of a, ta- like a kind of task force within the church you're engaging you're in this behavior study. prior to becoming pope or yeah, maybe it was probably, during his early, early papacy study. you probably should have studied and how much money have they paid? Well, I didn't. I, didn't, I thought we were debating black versus white crime, not like uh, not pedophilia white? in the church. They, they ain't no. They, I was about to say the wrong word. Them ain't black people. Them is white people. We and that's a crime. Unless you're telling me this ain't a crime. I didn't say it wasn't a crime. I said, can you provide me evidence that in the black community they have less what? of this going on? My job. 
Yeah, it is your job. That's what the debate is about. We're not on the same team, NJ. We're not on the same team. I'm going to call you MNJ. I can get away with that, right, Ralph? MNJ? M- I don't know what that means, but. Uh, My nigga Joel. Okay, all right, school. all right. Well, I. I <laughs> Go ahead and and okay. and I'm gonna ask MNJ, a couple questions in a minute. It's not my job. We not on the same team, MNJ. It's not my job to help you find information against black people. I listen. No, it's I, your it's you your job say, to find information. Do you, you understand uh, what a relative judgment is? To have a relative judgment, right. you need to find a, an objective metric to determine the difference between right. the prevalence in the black community or black countries. In the white community, white country. Okay, so, right? so if you don't have that data, uh-huh. that means you don't have a point, right? Okay, That's well, how this works. That's right. how objective reasoning right. works. You have to have, you have support right. for your position with you evidence. Moderator, you need to then materialize that evidence. Now, Otherwise, you're just time. engaging in conjecture. Ralph you're just cherry picking examples. I could right. just go and look up, look at all these black people that are raping and murdering really? and so on. It wouldn't really? get us I anywhere. You, I can counter. It. It wouldn't. That's a difference. What, what do you mean? Like, here's what, what, are you I'm, telling I'm, me there's no black murderers, there's no black rapists, there's no black no, pedophiles? I didn't say that. I well, exactly. So, so I could cherry pick these I'm kinds of things. The, the, the you don't have an actual not. basis in empirical right. data, then you don't have a point. Got right? you. I'm gonna you. Surely you can at least agree with that. Right. Before we get the data, I just want to highlight the Catholic diocese across the United States have paid more than $3 billion dollars to victims of clergy abuse, not three million dollars, three billion. Well, good. They should pay them. What's, they should be paying them for the crimes they commit in that an alarming rate at a Holocaust rate. I probably should have said that word, but at a genocidal rate. Remember, the debate is which crime is worse. So you would have to admit that y'all Look, do that crime worse. Why would I say worse? You don't have any evidence to support the position that it is it's worse you to have the than, than, the, than black crime in that respect because you haven't okay, provided any it. data can, can or any metric it? to compare. Can you show? Can you show any data? Can you show any data? I don't need to show data. You're the one that's substantiating this claim. I can show data when it comes to rape, when it comes to murder, can you and show so on. The, the official show? data. So you want to switch? Do you want to switch to that? We can switch to that because you need a lifeline or something. You need something. I don't. I don't really need a lifeline. I mean, you're just, yeah, just that Roman Catholic. I would have never based that. upon no actual like uh, material evidence. I would have never. I mean, it, 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 I it's, it's well known. The data is well known. In the fact, I think in the 2021 data, 60.4 percent of the known uh, the mm-hmm. known race of murderers uh, or the of known murderers of where we know the race of the murderer. Uh, 6.4 percent of them in the United States were black, even though they mm-hmm. make up. Only a thirteen percent. Now, so now, do you have the stat line for that? Yeah, that's from the official two thousand twenty one FBI statistics. Oh, that's arrest data, though. You do know that, right? Like, I'm a smart dude. See, Ralph, I didn't say the word you thought I was going to say. I'm smart. You know, that's arrest data. And why? Well, if they don't know, if there's someone who's been killed and they don't know who killed them, then obviously they can't be racially. Now, wait, let, let me ask a question. Are you, are you saying that that means that white people are getting away with murder and not getting charged, Captain? Is that what you're trying to say? or Not necessarily. Okay. Because I do think y'all get away with murder. Well, that's I mean, why that's I asked. I thought you might say that, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm, I'm not getting to that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're, just, you're not actually providing anything objective. Like, I'm looking at the fact of, of all the murders that we have solved. It's not that white people can't go around. The majority of people who get murdered, by the way, get murdered by members of their own race. So this idea that whites aren't arresting whites for killing whites, like, what even is what would even be the point of that? It's just ridiculous. More the statement that you made would murder more, according to the FBI, but that's just mm-hmm. the rest information. That's not conviction information. And here's the thing about that. This is the NPR.org. Wrongful conviction, excuse me, convictions disproportionately affect black Americans report show. Now, before I read this, the reason why I say it's a reason why I'm saying it's arrests and not convictions in New York city, where I'm at right now, they had this thing, which probably still exists called stop and frisk. Stop and frisk was a procedure where they specifically targeted blacks and Latinos and arrested them for anything because they needed to bump up the numbers, of course, to get more support. So although they was getting arrested, they was getting arrested for things that they weren't actually committing. 
but it just bumped up the port. Excuse me, the uh, the money that they would get. That's why this article it says the exoneration report has some disturbing numbers on the rate of exonerations. Black people represent thirteen point six of the population, but account for fifty three percent of exonerations in the registry. As yeah, well, they also account for 60% of convictions. So it would make sense if you're, if you're getting the majority of the convictions, you're also going to get the majority of the exonerations but so, but because making, that would just be logical. I, I got you, but you're making my point. You, the, uh, be, being arrested for something does not mean you're guilty for it and they're getting arrested. We're talking about convictions. We're not talking yeah, about arrests. No, no, wait, wait. Before you can get convicted, you got to get arrested. Come on, m and Get it together. You can't get convicted. Yeah, well, obvi- o- obviously, but we're talking about convictions and you're talking about exonerations. No, no. The stat- so what you're saying, well, if we got 60% of the convictions are black and 50 something percent of the exonerations are black, that would be proportional. That would actually be proportional relative to when we're looking at the overall uh, you know, amount of convictions here. A lot of people who get exonerated, by the way, probably did kill the individual, but they just can't prove it. Well, it doesn't but say that nevertheless, it's it doesn't say but nevertheless. But my point is, what? what are they getting exonerated from? They're getting exonerated from of what they were falsely arrested for. So you can't use the FBI data, which represent arrests, because just because they got arrested. The FBI data represents convictions. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Yeah, it does. Well, we we it, might it have to look that up. I thought it was convictions, but I again, I I don't know for sure. I th- I think it is, but I I don't know. I'd have to double yeah. check. Uh, there's it's a link for it somewhere. I mean, you can always pull it up. Yeah, you I was know, about to say there's you know, a link for it. You know what? I'll look for it and I'll pull it up and I'll let you know. Yeah, don't the private don't the private say prove all things. Catholic? Yes, I'll I'll, I'll look I'll look I'll look for it myself. Uh, so now, but my, my, anyway, it's, uh, so wait, wait, let me it's, just it's not really a point hold. because if we wait. if we do have a disproportionate amount of convictions, right. then you're going to have a disproportionate amount of, of uh, as I said, of exonerations because it's just, a, it's just an organic and natural ratio that you would expect. If you have way more convictions, but then the but then you have exactly the equal amount of exonerations, that would be strange. Okay, so here's that why that's be, not exactly true. In fact, what it actually proves is that black people aren't targeted by the legal system. If they're just if they are represented in, in exonerations almost equally to their representation in convictions, that means out of all the black people arrested for the crime, about mm-hmm. a, a pretty a similar ratio to right. relative to whites are getting either convicted or not convicted. If they were all getting convicted and no one's getting exonerated, that would mean maybe you could make the argument, oh, well, the system is kind of racist because right. everyone's getting convicted. I, I as soon as a black man comes before the court, we've got right. all these exonerations. That's actually proving that the, that the justice system is hearing the cases fairly no, uh, because it's exonerating all of these black people that have been accused of various crimes. I would disagree. And it's not that they commit more crimes you guys commit more crimes, but you also are more people, so that makes sense. That's why the article points out we're only 13.6 of the population. So from a numbers perspective, you guys would probably always have more numbers than us because there's more of you. So what the point that I'm talking about is the fact that they're getting exonerated for things that they didn't do let you know that they're not the criminals that they're set out to be. Right. And what about the convictions? You're like taking this isolated fact out of the context of the convictions. It's proportional to the convictions. So it doesn't actually make any sense. This is just a totally... You're getting exonerated from what you were convicted of. You're not getting exonerated from an arrest. You're getting exonerated from being found guilty of a crime that you did not do. There's a certain That's amount different. of exonerations that are going to occur. If you have one group have the most, that represents the, the majority of the convictions, the it's logical that they're going to represent the majority of the exonerations. It's no. just simply no. a, a basic no. ratio. Yeah, listen, hey, Joel, yes. I think, you know, there's a, no. there's a phrase always used. It's called listening is an art. There's and a phrase that I always use, which is which called is, be rational. What you're doing right now is you're being irrational. I'm not being my irrational. point is perfectly I'm reasonable. You would expect it to be proportional between these two things. Point. There's only a certain amount of convicted felons in a I never said category. Your point wasn't, I never said your point wasn't reasonable. I didn't even say I disagree with your point. I disagree with any time you say that um, our crimes are worse, I'm going to always disagree with you. On this subject, I didn't say I didn't disagree with you. What I pointed out 
was first in New York, they have a law called Stop and Frisk, where they specifically targeted blacks and Hispanics. That is facts that you cannot get around that. They was locking them up for things. Yeah, but that, why, would, why were they bringing that law to target blacks and Hispanics? It's because blacks and Hispanics commit more crimes. And so they needed go those laws back, specifically to deal with a more criminal population. No, they did not. No, no, that's not true. It's not, not just budget, but what it's about is... Remember, blacks get targeted because they're more violent. They're more criminal. So it's logical to target them if you don't like crime. Why are you so touchy? Why are you so touchy? Oh, I'm not touchy. I'm just making the point. It's, well, it's, in the it's all the point. internally consistent. That's not, that's not. No, that's not true. So again, the question. Remember, the question I asked you was: Do you feel that America specifically targets black people and not other races? Because other races are not getting targeted. Chinese people. We got a Chinese mafia. Chinese people do things. Chinese people. They don't commit crimes Chinese, like blacks. Do. Chinese people sell drugs. They don't commit crimes like white people. But y'all don't get locked up like we do. You can't even make that argument. This ain't about black people not committing crimes. You never heard me say that. So don't try to push the narrative. But what this is about is that your government facility in the land called America has a prejudice against black people. That is facts. Whether I brought up the facts, you're committing more crimes than it's so like not, you target not, criminal populations. We're committing more you have a bunch of black gangbangers walking around with their the pants sagging the and pumping gangster rap and Ooh, selling that's drugs that's and being that's violent, that's then that's obviously that's they're going to become profiles because that's okay, what a criminal what behaves like. Gangster, listen, this this is how you know gangster rap is stupid. That white boy watched the movie, went to see Batman and shot everybody up in the movie theater. Like, what are we talking about here? Prove you said I can't just talk, even though when I talk, I brought up the information. So bring up the information that we're killing more than y'all. Bring it up. The information is in the, con- the, the convictions what data. Like, what also want to sixty percent of the murder convictions in the year twenty twenty one were black people, despite better, being only thirteen percent of the population. Okay. That's the official FBI statistics. That is a rest. That is not convictions. Again, I'm trying to find the, the clarification on that. I do think it's convictions, but I I'm, can't find the exact line where it says that. If we had a copy of the of the oh, actual um, website right here, hold on one second. Well, there's a bunch of different websites that list the um, that list the stats. Wait, go back. Oh, wait, wait. If somebody finds the, can you the send it actual, to me so I go over it on my phone? Because um, I have uh, one, but somebody from my team also got the site. I'm gonna have him text it to me. And then we could take a look at it. Yeah, there's, I mean, here's the, um, the UCR is the Uniform Crime Reporting Program, which is where these stats come from. Um, yeah, let me, let me check this out. So this is, um, now this goes back, do you got anything for 2021 or something like that? Yeah, I'm looking at this. So, no, but yeah, I was talking to the guy because, like, okay. when I look here, uh, this says total arrest, table 43A. It does not. Say yeah, I could be wrong. Look, I'm I'm not, uh, well, I'm not and, and, and I and I see this. This shit, this is my man M and J trying to say that this ain't you. Right. Well, I mean, I'm trying to call balls and strikes here. I just I don't know for sure. I'll I read this. That. The FBI's Uniform Crime Reporting Program, which began in 1929, collects information right. on serious crimes reported to law right. enforcement agencies. So that goes kind of lean your way. I thought yeah. it was convictions. I don't have the the final. Word Thank on you. That. So I, I don't well, know. It's, the day. FBI statistic is murder offenders. Hey, okay. as offenders. M&J, table forty three A arrest, not convictions. M and J, stop talking about it. All right now, it's it's an it's an open. It's reporting. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's it's reporting, which is quite clearly it's it's classified here as offenders. It's not classified arrest? as people arrested for murder. You want me to send you the link? Yeah, send the it's link nice. if you want. Yeah, send the link. Let me have a look at what you're talking right, about. Yeah. Let me email you. Why not? Just put it I'm in the chat. Email. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to email it to myself. And oh, okay, then, um, yeah. And then you can put it in the I'll, chat. Right, right. And I'll put it in the chat. Table 43A says arrest, though, just for the record. And then if, if chat wants hey, to hey, weigh in, too, I, I'm hey, looking for the exact line that says um, Ralph, that. I miss coming on here. I just want to let you know. Say what? We got I said, I miss coming on here, man. We got to oh, yeah. do this like once every two months or something. I'm like down. That. Yeah, you know, I'm trying to do more debates. and uh, Yeah, yeah. Or even discussions like m and yeah. sounds like he wants to have discussions and stuff like that because he can't handle debates, clearly. No. So we could definitely have a discussion. According to, <laughs> according to the legal definition, an offender is someone who's been convicted. 
All right, hold on. I, I'm, yeah, I got that's my here. understanding. This is someone who has been arrested. Let me refresh my page. This is now. This is now. This doesn't do. I was trying to have them find something like uh, up to date, but the table would still be the same. I was just really looking for the numbers. I'm going to put this in the chat now. Does it let me paste it? Let me see. Wait, hold on. I don't think I copied it. Hold on. Let me see. Where you go? Let me highlight you. Right click. Anyway, Ethan, I just sent you uh, okay. Steve Saylor's thread, which not only does it show the hey, data, that, but it also it, it also MJ, provides like the, the how you can like look it up yourself. M and J, can you put that in the, in the thread? M and J, can you put that in the chat too? I'll so put it, I'll it? put it in the chat myself. Um, and and I'll I'll read this it's from that Steve one, Saylor, yeah. who I didn't even see got restored back to Twitter. That's kind of cool. Uh, says FBI. I never know who's there and who's not anymore. Uh, FBI announces blacks made up sixty point four percent of known murder offenders in twenty twenty one. That would be a new record for black dominance of murders, up from fifty six point five in twenty twenty. Although method methodological uh, snafus reduced police department participation this year, and I guess that was probably because of COVID. No, let me send this. Uh, I, I was just reading that out, and then I'll put it here in the chat, uh, and okay. you, and you should be able to grab it as well. And I appreciate I'll see, it. I'll see you posted that other one in the chat. And then also, um, when they get with the way they get the numbers, we got to also check the uh, percentages. So like now, right and also now, the, these people that are getting convicted of murder, by the way, they're getting convicted for murders, generally speaking, of other black people. I mean, Jay, let me just say this real fast. I, it's a stat. I just want to read this stat. This ain't pro you or me. I just want to read this stat. This is like the cde.ucr.gov. It says in 2021, there were 690,158 all violent crime incidents and 812,683 offenses reported in the United States by... 11,797 law enforcement agencies that submitted the National Incident Based Reporting System. It covers 69% of the population. So even as we look at those stats, there's 31% of those stats missing. So I don't know if. Yeah, but just because there's elements missing, like it's. Uh no, it's not logical to presume a trend uh, when you have such a large sample size. Like when you do a study, I agree when you, do, when you, you say something like an opinion me. poll, opinion polls are accurate even though they only get a sample of, say, like 10,000 respondents. Right. And we they can be accurate within a, quite a, within a, a certain kind of, you know, a little, it can be over a fluctuation, but usually they're quite accurate in representing populations of hundreds of millions. Hey, m and let me give you an example. George Zimmerman, for example, was arrested for killing Trayvon Martin, but there's no conviction. So if you was to look at the convictions of George Zimmerman, you wouldn't see it. Yeah, because he didn't commit murder. He was, he was defending himself. He was not defending himself. I didn't bring it up for that instance. I don't want to talk about that part. But my point in saying that is arrest data and conviction data. Also, he's a Mexican or something anyway, so who cares? No, he's white. I think he's a so-called Jew. He's not. Oh, maybe, I, but he's 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 kind of Hispanic looking. His mother, like, he's, his, he, mother he's some, his mother is uh Hispanic, but his father is white, so he's not one of us. Yeah, so his he's mother white. Hispanic, his father is Jewish, so he's yeah, not so he, he's not white. Yeah, he's Jewish. White people, Jewish people are white too. His his maternal grandfather was of Afro Peruvian descent, so actually he's nah. your cousin. No, nah, hell no. Uh, nah, yeah, he's no, he's your cousin, man. It's no, another. It's an, wait, make, okay, so Georgian was a murderer. Wait, another wait, black man committed a murder. Wait, 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 so wait, there so you go. Wait, 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 <laughs> did you suppress you say he was? Those African genes, man. We're going to find out. We're going to find out his ethnicity right now. Zimmerman identifies as a Hispanic his on voter registration forms. in Peru. His maternal mother, his father, is American of German descent. That's his father. So he's a white okay, man. So, so he, so he, you thought, he, well, he's not a white man. If someone is like half Hispanic, is this a Halsey uh, like, situation? Sorry, go like ahead. The Hispanic, the, the Hispanic people uh, all have some European genetics because of the you know, coming over from Spanish or other groups. And Joel, didn't make them white. Didn't Jay, you just lied because you said his paternal father. His paternal grandfather, you try to say, was Afro-Peruvian. You just lied. No, no, no. I said maternal. Maternal great grandfather was of Afro-Peruvian descent. Okay, you know what? Although I don't believe y'all tell the truth, I'm gonna go back. Let's read it from Wikipedia. Maybe Wikipedia is lying. Maybe Wikipedia is racist. The white man controls Wikipedia, and they're changing all the, they're uploading all this BS on the Wikipedia. I can't say that because 
Wikipedia, like anybody, like you and I can go in there, I think, and like edit Wikipedia. So I'm not going to put that on white people. I'm not going to do that. See, I'm honest. He running from that arrest, though. The stats say arrest, and that's why I use George Zimmerman, who was a German. He was not his mama. You are what your daddy is. Well, he put it this way. I wouldn't want my daughter marrying someone who looks like George Zimmerman, okay? I don't really consider him white. He's related to Hitler. That's George Zimmerman is Hitler. He's not. That's what he is. That's what he is. <laughs> I, I, listen, I, 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 George Hitler. We'll just call him that for now. I knew Ralph. Yeah, call him George Hitler. I knew Ralph would like that one. I always get, I always get Ralph to get one good laugh out of Ralph every time. I get, get That's true. <laughs> so, so by the way, what's what's your take on Hitler? Are you, are you, are you, are you, do you find Hitler admirable because in a certain way, or do you find him detestable? Um, Hitler. Okay, I won't act like I'm a Hitler expert, but what I do know is that Hitler felt they was being oppressed by Jewish people, and Jewish people would probably feel they, they was the same. So it's like two sets of white people having a fight, and Hitler chose to do what he did to Jewish people, and they fought back, and then they killed Hitler. Hitler lost. I mean, I don't know what else to say. What I will say, though, is that, and I don't know if it was a, a, a mental tactic by the Germans, period. But they would treat the black athletes with more dignity than America would. I will say that. I will say Interesting. that. Interesting. That's fine. Yeah, no, it is. Uh, like Jesse well, Owens was treated thing. better. Jesse Owens was treated better. Um, the athletes were treated better by Hitler. I will say that. And a lot of people don't know Hitler used to work with the Japanese people, too. He wasn't as racist as people think. Um, so I, that's what I, that would be my opinion, um, about Hitler. I do know they killed that dude though. Y'all lost that one. Y'all been trying to bring Hitler back ever since. <laughs> that's why y'all like Trump. Y'all like Trump. Trump is like Hitler light. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I wish he was more, I wish he had more Hitler qualities. Like Trump is like, he's like 10% Hitler. I wish he was like. I wish he was like 50%. In fact, I wish he was 100%. Yeah, be real. Like, yeah. But if he was at least 50%, I that would be nice. To be clear, I want to say, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. What he's saying is, I wish Trump would bring the ovens. That's what he's saying. No, I definitely no, disavow there was that. No ovens. That's fake. That's a Jewish I, lie. Okay, it's God. Not, there were, there were no joke. ovens. It's just M and J. It's just a joke. Just a joke. Well, I don't want any of us unless it's an easy you, bake. Y'all, y'all wish when Trump in inspired them to run up on the White House, y'all was hoping they won. I know you was hoping M and J. You were sad. How do you yeah, feel what's that? Every January 6th, like, what do you do? You pour out a little liquor or something like that? For <laughs> well, I'm not an American, so it's not like it's a, you, as big to me as it is to Americans. Me that you you, you could have fooled me that you're not an American. I think you love well, America. Well, I mean, there is a well, I do love America. I do. I do love America. I do want the best for America. I mean, white Americans are my racial brothers. You know what I mean? Like, right. uh, they you both know, come true. from the same mother country. Your brother's true. They're not. Yes, they they're, are. They're not. Yes, they are. Incorrect. Yes, no, they are. they're not. Yeah, uh, they're about as genetically similar to me as like a Sicilian or something. Like it's very. They're not. They are, they are the same too. Have you seen Sicilians? I, I mean, maybe to you, all <laughs> white people look the same, but yeah, to me, I mean, come on. Listen, you know, just because y'all like different shades of white, you got the like Alaska, Turks, snow looking white. And then you got a Sicilian looking white, but it's well, all. See, I'm I'm a Snow White, okay? I'm a Snow White, and I, I don't know, if, I don't accept <laughs> Jews as white. Was a woman though. You know, Snow White was a woman. You saying you a woman? Well, you then, use the term that's, first. That's a stupid fair. rhetorical point. Go ahead. So I'm just, I'm just being funny. Go ahead. <laughs> now let let me ask a question, and we're gonna take some callers too, because I have some callers right. here. Yeah, because we got about what twenty minutes yeah, left. Yeah, I want hey, oh, Jay, man, it's going good so far, man. I want to get some. Yeah, co- this is good content. I, I, I tried to make this entertaining. Right. You know, I tried to make this fun for the audience. So right. I think we uh, succeeded. I think I think we succeeded. I think it's been that. fun, and and we're right. gonna take some calls. I'm not quite done yet. I want to ask you know the topic of the debate, uh, and and I'll ask you the same thing in reverse here in a second, Joel. But uh, Captain, what makes white crime worse than black? crime um okay first on an even level playing field all crime is horrible i'm not for any crime so i'm not for blacks committing crimes like we go out and teach to prevent crimes and when when i agree to this particular debate i'm mainly speaking at the amount 
that that's more so what I'm speaking. It's not that black people don't molest, that they don't rape, that they don't kill, that they don't sell drugs, but the level of evil that uh, white people have, that's what I'm battling in this particular blood sport. So I would say I'm against crime totally on either side. I just think that uh, white people do it more and worse than us. Now, how about you, Joel? What makes black crime worse than white crime? Well, first of all, I want to say that the real victims of black crime are black people, generally speaking, and the real victims of white crime are generally speaking white people on average. If you look at the data, it's pretty clear. And so, uh, you know, these are... You know, these are afflictions that we do to ourselves. When you look at like interracial crime, the statistics are quite clear that uh, blacks have raped far more white women than the reverse. We don't want to rape black women, frankly, because they're ugly. But, uh, you know, even beyond that, we just don't rape as much at all. Or if you want to look at murders, um, you know, the interracial murder rate is very clearly skewed in one direction. Um, And uh, so in the kind of crimes we commit to one another, at least in the American context or in Britain or France, um, you know, we see a very clear kind of pattern. Um, now, overall, though, when he wants to make this more abstract point that crime isn't just, you know, th- these kind of murders and, and, and rapes and these kinds of things, but crime is this more expanded, larger concept like colonialism or something, then I think the qualitative argument, I guess I'll restate it, I think makes sense, which is that if you want to kind of persecute or prosecute white civilization well it's kind of weak because white civilization western civilization is so glorious and so magnificent um and our goals are so noble and so virtuous whereas uh, you know black crime doesn't really have this like deeper existential quality that i can really point to this great grand african civilizational project that they're engaging in or something that i'm morally criticizing i'm not in fact if um if there are you know African black leaders who are trying to politically contest negative forces in their society to bring about a higher uh, civilizational quality, then I actually sympathize with them. I sympathize with the Ugandans eradicating homosexuality and these kinds of things, for example. Um, But nevertheless, you don't really see much of that going on in Africa. You don't see that same kind of Faustian aspiration. You don't see that same kind of refinement, civilizational refinement and so on. You see with us, um, and so, you know, he wants to blame the white man for this. It's, it's, everything is our fault. He has this victim mentality. Everything is our fault. Uh, we are responsible for providing um, a, a, a negative example to the black man. Well, really, you have no one to blame but yourself. Ultimately, the responsibility to advance black people to get uh, black culture and black civilization together is with other black people. And, you know, I can talk about the problems with Jews and this and that and so on, but ultimately the, de- the, de- the degradation of Western civilization, fundamentally the buck stops with white people. It's our fault. We've let up, we've turned away from our religion. We've turned away from the principles uh, that made our civilization great. And we've allowed it to fall into disrepair. Um, and this is our fundamentally our failing. Um, and, uh, you know, I think ultimately that's a healthier mentality because you have to look inward to correct your own flaws uh, and your own issues in order to progress. And I think it's the same for blacks. Ultimately, if blacks want solutions, crying to the white man about how the white man shouldn't do this and should do that and so on. This is not this is the mentality of someone who comes forth as a as a subordinate saying, take care of me, white man. Treat me this way. I need you for this. I need you for that. Um Black dignity will only come from no longer looking to the white man to provide solutions, but looking to themselves. And insofar as uh, there is kind of black self-determination, a black dignity that wants to be asserted, their own independence and so on, I think this is a positive development. And actually there could be uh, some alignment between blacks going their own way. I, I'm supportive of the Acon project of let's get all the wealthy, successful black people and let's move back to Africa and invest in uh, advancing hmm. black culture, hmm. black civilization, uh, as opposed to um, engaging in the system of the white man and so on in, in America, um, which is ne- will never be, it will never belong to the black man in the same way. They'll never have their dignity and ownership and self-ownership over themselves under that situation that they could have. And so I would support that kind of thing, and I see it as noble. So I think that would be how ultimately I would frame this discussion. But, uh, yeah, in conclusion, um, you know, I, I think 
I think overall, it, it really depends on what strata you want to have this debate. This debate is interesting, I guess, because we've been able to operate at different levels, whether we're just debating crime statistics or we're getting into these more existential questions about race relations or whatever. Um, and so, uh, yeah, thanks for the debate. I think I think we uh, put on some fun for the audience and I enjoyed it. So I hope you enjoyed it too. Hey, can I just say one thing, Ralph? Yeah, what, now hold on. I'm going to let you respond to that if you want to get in a little uh, you know, re- retort. And then I'm going to ask some questions and take the callers. But I agree. Uh, with, of course, I'm not taking sides of the debate. But with that last point, I think it's been uh, good for the audience. And I, and I do like how it's able to operate on several different levels depending on oh, how yeah, you want to take it. So I, I, I agree with that. And thank you both for being here. Now, go ahead. If you want to say a little something. Yeah, it won't be that long. Um, the, the parts that you said about um, – um, depending on uh, white people, I agree with you. I don't think we should depend on y'all. We don't need white people. To I've heard you say people. that. Yeah, so I figured yeah, you probably. We, agree we, with yeah, that. we do not need. I agree with that. That's why sometimes, like I said, when we have these conversations, M and J, there's some things that we're going to agree on, and then there's some things because this is a blood sport type of thing. I have to whoop your ass. So M and J, you just got to get it. But there's some things you're going to say that I'm in agreement. I do not believe that we got to go cry to white people say, "Give us this, give us that." All we ask for is that you get out of way, get out of our way as we go to get it ourselves. And that's where we always have the problem. But when you brought out the raping and the crime, and then I'm going to yield. And again, this is a rest. It's table 43. When it comes to rape, if I go to the top of this crime in the United States, 12,187 rapes by white people, 5,000 by black. If I go to crime in general, as I scroll down to the overview, it says arrest, which lets you know this is about arrests and not convictions. It says arrest by race and ethnicity. 68.9% of all individuals arrested were white. 27% were black or African-American. 3.9% were other races. So when you bring up statistics, 68, which if we round both of those off, we would say 70% belong to y'all. 27% belong to us. Ralph, have you got any other questions? I'm good. I, I just wanted to. Yeah, I have well, some, by the way, that's still ahead. disproportionate, right? That's still like double representation for blacks, uh, according to that data. Also, you're also grouping in uh, Hispanics into no, the I white did not category. Group any Hispanics in there. No, that does not. It's set, if we, we didn't, well, they well, count. What's the Hispanic, what's the yeah. Hispanic yeah. proportion of that data then? No, no. It says of arrestees for whom ethnicity were reported, 18% were Hispanic or Latino. That is not including, so that uh, percentage, I had this argument with another guy on Killstream that uh, said the same thing, but that's not including because when you go look at the data at the top, it's a, it has total white, black or African American, Hispanic or Latino, um, American. Wait, so can you repeat all the different, like so the white percentage was how much? 68.9. And the black percentage was what? Was twenty seven, yeah. And what was the what was the Latino eighteen? No, no, no. Uh, outside of whites and blacks, the rest of the percentage was three point nine. Was the other races? But then you but you said Hispanic and Latino was eighteen percent. This says of arrest of arrestees for whom ethnicity was. Yeah. So then the so then that that must be part of the white. That's uh, not quantity. part. Of that. The, no, it's well, not. Well, it is because 18 plus 27 plus 68 plus 3 equals right. more than 100. But that 18 would probably be a part of the 3.9% in the other races. That's going to be part of the 3.9%. It doesn't make any sense. Well, I don't know why the FBI, which is run by white people, would say 68.9 or is white. Because they're grouping, as I said, all the Hispanics in oh, under this oh, category so of white to... So whites and so you you Hispanic and white at the same time? No, that's what I'm saying. Well, the data must be that must be how the data is is portrayed no, for that ratio to go, make sense. I go up to the top when you go up to the top of total arrests, it breaks it all down and separates it. It gives the ethnicity it has Hispanic or Latino, it has Hawaiian, it has American Indian or Alaska Native, it has Black or African American, and it has white. So. I'm sorry. So well, I'm not looking at I'm not looking at what you're looking at. So I'm just going off what you're saying. The math just didn't add up. So there must be. I ain't gonna lie to you. Yeah, I'm like you. You know. Now wait a minute. All right. Now let let me <laughs> we'll we'll put we'll put a pin in that because I I can see that this could really last a while. This this discussion. Uh, now let me ask a few of these questions and get some of these no, callers. No yeah, no problem. Because I mean I don't know that 
we'll probably come to an agreement on that. A uh, Sunny D says, "Explain Mary and Barry." And I guess this was going back to earlier in the debate. Uh, <laughs> I you thought you, DC? yeah, I thought you smoke would laugh at that. He <laughs> smoked crack twice and get voted mayor. <laughs> That's right. They had him on tape smoking crack, I believe. Yeah, or buying it one or the other. I forget. I was a little kid when this happened, but uh, yeah, me too. I was. That was like the nineties. I was yeah. young too when it came out. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess that was his retort about Trump. Uh, establishment Groyper says these statistics relating to disproportionate black crime have have existed long before Trump was in the picture. That's more of a of a statement there. Uh, let me see if I can mm-hmm. grab another question. Um, uh, well, the other one says blacks and natives were murdering and raping before we took over. Uh, hmm. Let's see. Jay Dank's respecter says, for the captain, how is the general that man is a living legend? Uh, <laughs> is what he said there. <laughs> He's doing great. He's doing That's wonderful. Cool. That's cool to hear. Yeah, I got to know which general. Is he talking about the general that made the Jewish boy cry? I believe so. Yes. About? That's the general that he's talking That's about. That's the general he's talking about? Yeah. Oh, he's doing great. Yeah. General Mayaka Allah, he's doing great. He's still in the school. We're still doing work. He's doing wonderful. Yeah, he's a, he's a legend. He's uh, a hero. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. I know. He made. He said, cry, white boy. <laughs> when he had the Jewish boy crying. <laughs> Yeah, we played that clip many hey, times here on the show. For M&J. You got to play it for M&J. You'll love it. I'm pretty Bro, sure he's heard it. Or he's like, uh, the Holocaust <laughs> was a joke, nigga. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. <laughs> yeah, I love that shit. That shit's funny as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I don't, I don't he, like that. I don't he's know, I don't he's in fellowship with that guy. Yeah, yeah. So we've talked about it. Uh, every Almost every time he comes on, somebody asks about the general uh, almost every right. single time. Uh, all right. Now, we do have some callers. Let's see how this goes. Uh, okay. If you want to call in, I saw Tenrio wanted to talk. I'll let him on first since he's a fellow streamer here on Cozy.TV. Uh, and I'm slash Ethan Ralph on on this channel. I'm also live on Rumble uh, at the moment as well. We've had uh, about a thousand people pretty much the whole time watching us. Thereabouts or just under. Oh, that's good. So that's yeah, good. that's a pretty good that's a pretty good crowd here on a Friday <laughs> night. Uh, and we've hey, had. Did that put me in the Hall of Fame yet? Am I official? You're gonna be official, but I have to do another oh, class. I, I have to do a class of inductees, and I'm gonna try to do that this fall. I'd actually okay. thought about listen, I'll come to it. Yeah, I'll well that's what I was thinking. I was actually yeah. thinking about trying to do an in person uh mm-hmm. inductee ceremony since yep. it's based around a roast basically uh on the on the right. other Hall of Fame that we've done where people come in and, and the person is inducted and then at the end they get to say their part, right? Which is usually roast everybody else right <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a roast so uh that's the that's the setup for the kill stream hall of fame just yeah, so it's a little entertaining I'm down for that man yeah down. okay you know what i and you were definitely going to be on the on the list of inductees as well and i talked you. about this uh before you came on that you know the cap is pretty much that. a hall of fame guy here and and i do that's plan right. to do that so I, I think it'd be more fun to do it in person uh and to do like yeah, a I class would too. yeah it just it just comes off better now we've done one on air but it's it's a little bit harder, and it's not the same, you know, if you're not in person for a roast. Right. So, all right, let's bring on Tenrio. If you want in, call in now. T.me slash the Ralph Retort on Telegram. Anybody's welcome. I know the captain's restreaming hey, it as I well. I you on, um, on Rumble. Say what? Uh, What's the name on Rumble? Uh, just the Ralph Retort, and I'll link yeah, it in our Retort. I'll link it in our chat as well. Uh, all right, let me bring in Tenrio. Uh, go ahead, Tenrio. You got to unmute yourself. There we go. I see it. Now. Oh, you see it? Okay, cool. Oh shit! I accidentally left the meeting. Let me join back. Oh, my God. Yo, what, is, what good, is good, guys? Hold on, hold on one second. What Man, is the way I can boy? See. Wait, 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 wait. One, one sec. Because is there, gotcha. the comments? is there like comments in the chat? Do you have like? Is there like a comment on here? Um, hold on, hold on. Okay, now Joel or Joel. Let's see. Okay, now Joel, say something because I accidentally unpinned you. I I don't know what's going on. No, I got it. I got it now. That was my fault. I accidentally backed out of your version of the meeting, so it's fine now. Um, What were you saying, Captain? No, I got it. Okay. I got it. All right. Sorry about that. That was my fault. I accidentally backed out. Uh, Of course, tech issues. The show wouldn't be complete unless I had a failure of my own. Now, go ahead, Tenrio. Yo, what is good, guys? Ethan Ralph. What's up, Yo, the Ralph of mail. It's good to be Joel Davis. What's up, my boy? Yo, Cap. First time What's meeting up? you, brother. What's going on? What's going on, man? How, you How y'all doing? doing? I'm cool. I'm cool. I have a, uh, I have a question for Cap. Of course, you know I'm here. I'm on Cozy TV as well, and I'm a member of America First. Uh, so, 
Yo, um, Cap, do you really think that uh, Jews and whites are the same? Do you think they're yeah. the same people? I just think they're from a different tribe, but they're the same. You think they're from a different tribe? You want to elaborate on that? From a biblical perspective, uh, so-called Jews come from Amalek. Um, so they're just right. another Edomite. So we look at white people as Edomites and just different tribes, like how you got the 12 tribes of Israel with different tribes. So that's just the tribe. Amalek is that tribe. Right, and the white the whites are from a different tribe, but they're of the no, same the white, people. That's right, but they're of the same progenitor, so to speak. Like the children of Israel's so, progenitor is Israel or Jacob. So the whites' progenitor is Edomites, and it's just different tribes. All right, so the whites are Edomites, and the, and the Jews are uh, Semites, is what you're saying. Yeah, they're all Edomites. All right. So, all right, so now I do have another question in pertaining to you know, just the blacks. Cause you know, I'm black. I'm from New York city, born and raised. Yeah. Uh, you know, I teach in exactly. Harlem. Say that again. I teach in Harlem every Saturday. We're going to be on 125th and Lennox Ave. If you want to come outside tomorrow. All right. I got family up there. I'll come see yeah, you. Bring your ass outside. But, um, but, um, what, what do you, what do you think about what we've been doing, how we've been struggling, you know, these past couple of decades, you know, this past century or so let's say for example, you know, because you, you, you did mention segregation. You did mention, uh, you know, going back to Africa and, uh, you know, just like segregating from the white stand, letting them stand out of our way to, you know, just achieve a, a prosperous community. Right. right. So mm -hmm. let's say let's say, for example, let's give a scenario. Right. That they actually do, quote unquote, step out of our way and we actually get, you know, we actually get what we want in terms of no interference from any community, whether it be white, whatever the fuck. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we have these people stand out of our way to achieve whatever it is that we're accomplishing. What's the plan then? I think um, history can teach itself. Uh, one correction: I don't want to go back to Africa. I don't like Africans. The motherfuckers is funky, so like you don't like Africans. <laughs> uh, yeah, like it's, it's crazy oh. because you know we see a lot of uh, wait, 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 wait. a we lot of a lot of brothers come come where, waving the flag, waving the African flag. But I think you get it in the sense yeah, that you know African. Africans that, hate us, African, bro. Like, like even when they talk about going back to Africa, right? Just think about their concept. You're gonna move let's say a million black people in America and then put them into another land. Right. But people don't realize you're invading another nation's space. And so that nation is not going to take you into their space because then that represents another problem. So those million people now become this country, whatever country in Africa they go to is going to be their problem. So I don't believe we got to go back there. Are but, you against immigration, uh, therefore, from Mexicans and so on into the United States uh, for the same reason? Uh, I'm not against immigration because the part of Mexico that they're in is because when you whites came over here, you took their land and put them into the worst part of Mexico. You know, New Mexico, Texas, California, all of that was Mexico before y'all came over here. So, no, I'm not against immigration at all. Are you against Irish immigrants, there, Italian immigrants, or are you only against Mexican immigrants? Uh, only Mexican yeah, see, you see the problem. So just like you don't listen, and you don't have to be for Mexican, and you could be for Irish. Just like I could be for Mexican and not for Irish. So I answered your question. Yeah, but I'm just, but it's curious because you said that going back to Africa would be you'd be like invaders, like they have their own way of life, their own ethnic groups. Right. And if a bunch of American blacks went there, they would be outsiders and they would right. disrupt these countries and it could produce hostilities. Right. So do you think that's the same thing with all these migrants flooding into all of these white countries? I don't look at that from. I look at that from Irish. I look at it from East Indians. Like remember when them East Indians came in, they put them in the Airbnb. So I'm against all of that. I don't look at Mexicans that way because they're already on their land. So I don't look at Mexicans, Native Indians. So, okay, Indians. so Mexicans one way, but like all the other groups, because a lot of the immigrants are from India, okay, so they're from China. India, I'm against, so I'm against African immigrants. I'm against anybody that's not my people coming over here, if that makes it uh, clean. So East Indians, Africans, Asians. I would be against all that, but I'm just not. What if a Mexican that. moves up to New York? Would you say, get the fuck back to Texas? No, man. I would say you want to get in class. You want to learn. You want to be a brother. You want to build up this nation. That's what I would say. Cause Mexicans are so my you brother. Wanna, so you want to take over. You want to take over. Uh, so, so, you, so you got, you got this like black Mexican Alliance thing going on. Well, I don't That's really a hostile takeover. If I've ever heard it. Oh, no, actually it's not a hostile takeover. So to go back to answering the question, history teaches itself. So when, 
they so-called freed the slaves during segregation. All we did without the truth, what I mean by truth, without the truth of the Bible, without the truth of the Bible, when all we had was us, we didn't kill each other. Our families weren't separated. We weren't drug dealers because we knew we didn't have that dependency that was created for us. Slavery represented a certain dependency. We knew where our food came from. Even, even as we're going through hell, we knew where our food came from, our clothing came from, et cetera. Now when we're so-called free, we have to- But did you know where the ships came from? Wait, wait, hold on one second. And so once we realized we had to fend for ourselves and provide our own shelter, our own education, we did just that. So when you go into the late 1800s, the early 1900s, when the white man was going through his Great Depression, black people was going through a utopia establishing their cities, establishing their families, establishing their education, establishing everything. So if we had that same opportunity, that same history would take the same precedence. Because when I say segregation, if the white man separates from us, then he has to take his drugs away too. He has to take his abortion away too. He has to take all of those things that were put in place for us. Take the welfare away. Take all of that away, and just let us come. Yeah, well, what's together. that got to do with the Mexicans, though? Like, why are you? Why do you see the Mexicans as your brothers? Got you. So, M and J. Well, we teach from a biblical perspective that the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians we're all the same nation of Israel, different tribes, but the same nation. So, a Dominican, a Haitian, a Puerto Rican, a Guatemalan, Mexican on over here will be considered one of the tribes of the nation of Israel, so they would be my brother. When you well, see the genetic say, basis for that doesn't seem to be quite clear. I mean, there's a, there is a lot of difference physically between Mexicans and Africans. Uh, no, a Mexican would have, probably have more genetically well, in common with a Filipino just, than they, they would well, with, a Mexican, with, an, with an African. Let me correct you. We're not African, though. Like, yeah, but you descend from Africa, right? Like yeah, you, you came from Africa. No, 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 we don't. We descend That's what we got from... Where'd the slaves come from? I'm, I'm glad you asked that. So before I answer that part, we descend from Jacob, who is the patriarch for the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. In the Bible, we are the children of the book. When you go into an ancient map system during the time of slavery, where they took us from, which is the west coast of Africa, it would say land of Judah, because we knew exactly who we were before we came over here and were denied to keep our identity and culture. So you can see instances of oral tradition of them knowing that they were Israelites. Harriet Tubman and her whole family knew that they were Israelites. So Africans and Israelites are not the same people. Biblically, Africans would come from a Hermetic stock. Biblically, Israelites come from a Shemitic stock, two different lines. So just because we were exported from that land doesn't mean we're from, we're the people. Wait, so you don't think, so you think that the, the Mexicans the Puerto Ricans uh -huh. and American blacks are all related, but you're not related to the black people that live in Africa today. Correct. They're from a different group. They're from a different tribe. <laughs> well, this is some wild shit. It is. There is a point to be made about that. And it's like I was saying before, it's like, you know, if we do all segregate back to Africa, we still have the whole problem of, you know, we're not, we're, we're the losers of the tribal wars. Like, there are many different tribes in Africa. There are many different countries. And you know so why we're, 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 we're the losers overall first. And, hold on, let me finish my point. And second of all, I'll say this, you know, let's say we do come from Israel. We are, we are the blacks are truly God's chosen people, right? So uh, wouldn't that be more or less a uh, example of us, you know, teaming together and, really really knowing who our our true enemy is those who claim they are they are god's chosen people those who claim you know they are semitic yeah so um when we like we don't understand the reason why we lose what you say is a tribal war is because we don't understand what loyalty is my envy of like a guy like m and j is that m and j is loyal to his cause if you listen to this debate that we had, he's so loyal to it that he doesn't care what crime they commit as long as it results in him winning because he's loyal to that cause. Black people don't know what loyalty is. We've lost that. If you go I before agree. the 1960s, before like 
integration came in. Black people knew exactly what loyalty was. They knew you needed to stay in the house. You had to raise them kids. Um, you had to protect your community. You had to protect your own. Integration came, feminist movement came, drugs came, and we lost what that sense of loyalty was. And that's the only reason we lose. You lose. Listen, I've seen, like, black people have been fighting for civil rights since the 1960s, have not got nothing. And then I've seen the Asians come, and when Joe Biden got in office, got an anti-Asian bill passed because Asians was loyal to Asians. When we learn, I'll, I'll say I'll, I'll say this on well, just to add to your point. Let him finish. Hold on, Tenor. Let him finish. Right, right. When right, we right. learn what a sense of real loyalty to black people is, we'll realize we don't have to cry to the white man for everything. We can just be. I don't, and I'll, I'll try to be short. When you talk about black business economics, the dollar runs out of the black community to go to other nations. Whereas back during like Black Wall Street, it would take a year for that dollar because black people had a sense of loyalty. Our solution does not involve fighting white people, arguing with white people. It just comes with having a sense of loyalty and love to black people a year. All right, now right. go ahead, Tenry. I'll so, get your thought on. So, you know, you, you do mention that uh, all the money is, uh, the dollar is, you know, uh, leaving, leaving, you know, the black communities, leaving, leaving America in general, because that's where it's really leaving from. And they're going to foreign aid, foreign countries, things like that. But you got to ask yourself the question. It begs the question, where's the money going? How much is, how, how much uh, is, uh, what country is obtaining the most? And, you know, that's the country of Israel. That's, that is, that is Israel, like straight up and straight down, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So, you know, who's pretending that they are God's chosen people currently, you know? Those who call themselves Semitic, those who are, you know, Khazarians, those who are Ashkenazis, right? So it's like we've been at this whole war back and forth with whites having a chip on our shoulder, having an anvil, a cinder block for decades, for years. We've been led astray. We've been lied to. We've even been held at, at, at as many certain standards. We've even had like, you know, uh, spoils like dangling over our heads like, hey, uh, you know, you see with like all of the degenerate rap music, for example, hey, I'll make you famous if you do this. OK, who's who owns all of these things? Who owns the banks? Who owns the media? Who owns the record labels? Who owns the, all of the stuff that is currently you talk about feminism? You talk about uh, drugs going into our, our communities. Yeah, that all that all stems from one source. You have to know what that source is. You have to know what your true who your true enemy is. Malcolm X has been fighting for our rights for a very long time. And he mentioned this. He brought it to the mainstream, you know. This is why I'm a part of America first. This is why I'm a part of that movement. I see Nicholas J. Fuentes as the modern Malcolm X. He is the one that's actually speaking the truth on these things. And no one else is canceled nowhere near as much as he is. You know, you could bring up all of these people, Andrew Tate, all these other, all these other influencers, nowhere near the amount because he knows who the real enemy is, right? And I don't mean enemy like, hey, we go out and kill somebody or anything like that. I mean, this is this is a spiritual war. This is this is a psychological war. And we don't know who our enemy is. You've got most blacks. Ninety percent of blacks in our communities do not know. They have no idea. Even Malcolm made that mistake in unfortunately putting blacks and whites in the same category. You know, he wanted to be you know, he wanted to be separatist. He wanted to be for our people. I feel that. But overall, he didn't, he made the mistake, he made the greatest mistake of not siding with other people that have the same issues. We all have one enemy. I yield. Thank you, Sharp. Right, well, Go, I appreciate but, you calling it. Yeah, go ahead. Great call, by the way. Yeah, like what's, um, what's, what's kind of uh, striking about this uh, belief system to me is, you know, it just seems like a, a very convenient mythology or about my or the Jewish people, uh, your, like what, what you just what you just put forward okay. is yes. like a very kind of convenient mythology. But but from my understanding of like the actual uh, genetic differences between groups, the idea that you guys are all related, I mean, do you think that the genetics? Do you therefore dispute the genetic modeling and say that there's something like there's some conspiracy or something in the genetic modeling? Because from what I understand, genetic similarity between you and 
a black person from Africa is much is going to be much closer than between you and any Mexican, Absolutely. right? Or or whatever. There, there, there might be some uh, kind of Hispanics that have some African ancestry because they were, you know, obviously uh, slavery wasn't just in the United States of America; it was all over uh, all over the place in the Americas, and so you know, there's African yeah. genes everywhere. But um, yeah, I'm just kind of like curious, like how you rationalize that like have you looked well, you know there's more genetic differences between africans and black people than africans and white people i'm screaming in black people and white people so that's not true what you're saying well no but i am more genetically similar I scientifically to I think every other at, white person I, I, than any non-white person no because that's I, I just how it works that. no 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 that, that ain't what i'm saying you are closer to white people right because y'all all the same mm. tribe melanated people don't make you the same it's a lot of melanated people you got all the Hamitic races or African races, you got Arabs that got melanin, you got East yeah. Indians that got, you got Hawaiian, all these people, just because you got melanin don't make you the same. You guys are the anomaly. That's what I'm, sa- that's what I'm saying. I'm saying, you, you were saying before race. how you're related to the Mexicans and so on. And it's like, you guys are very distinct. Yeah, but no, there's nothing that says that we all have to look alike. That's not how it works. Well, that, that, that's kind of how it works with genetics. Like usually if you're more genetically related, you look more similar. It's kind of how it works. Right, but you haven't examined the genetics between the nations that you mentioned to say whether we're closer to one than the other. You basing it all off assumptions and science. No, I have. I'm about to get the information. I have the team I got here, they're going to give me the information. So when it says larger genetic differences between Africans than between Africans and Eurasians, we're not the same. No, there is a lot of genetic diversity within Africans, but Africans yeah. are more similar to each other than yeah, to is, any outside. This is called med, by the way. They do the studies. We're not the same. Stop. Like, no, well, no, I'm, I'm not disputing that there's a lot of genetic diversity within Africans, no, but within did. blacks. They, they, there is a lot of genetic diversity. What black. I'm saying is that they're more similar, they're more related to one another than they no. are to any other group. Well, you would have to substantiate that you're making a statement because they're not. Yeah, We're close. Well, that's what that's what my under, that's what my understanding is. I, I wasn't. I didn't come in here with like to have like a debate about about this. So I I didn't prepare notes or anything. Gotcha. But my understanding. But having an understanding, yeah. like you and I both can have an understanding, and then there's science. And so if yeah, that's, science, that's so that's what I'm asking you, asking you because right. I don't. From what I understand, like there isn't there isn't a genetic there isn't significant genetic similarity whatsoever between Mexicans and American blacks. So I'm and a, so. I'm a, it would, would be if you guys were all descended from the same tribe. No, I never said we were descended from the same tribe. I said we're from the same nation. Oh, the same, oh, the same right. nation, same right. tribe. So the tribe of Ishakar has, and the tribe of Judah or the tribe of Benjamin, they, would have, they could have started off the same, and then as they travel and venture out, they could become different, but they're still family. So for us, from a biblical perspective, the Mexicans are from the tribe of Ishakar. So let's say the West Indians... They would be from the tribe of Benjamin. Me, I'm from the tribe of, or black, so-called blacks are from the tribe of Judah. When people do the whole African thing, it's just like, well, they was taken from Africa, so they must be African. That don't even make sense because if a white, if white people are exported from Africa, you're not going to say they're African. I think Angelina Jolie, Lee, Elon, wasn't it? Elon Musk, Elon Musk is a damn African by citizenship. Nobody's gonna say he's white. I'm screaming. You say yeah, that. sure. I'm not. I'm not trying to. Uh, I'm not really arguing. Uh, trying to uh, contest that. I'm more trying to understand the relationship between you guys and the Mexicans oh, yeah, and so on. The Mexicans must have misset by your theory. Like, let's just say for the sake of argument, I don't believe your theory, but let's just say we'll accept it for the sake of argument. If the Mexicans are from the same nation, they must have miscegenated a lot with other with other humans that are from that are native to other regions to be able to become that different over this over time. Just so you know, like when it comes to like genetics or I know sometimes when I uh, have conversations like this with people, they bring up like DNA, like ancestry and stuff like that. We don't base this off of genetics. Our base is off the Bible and then historical history. So for Taino Indians, for example, you could find uh, Hebrew stones, uh, Mexicans, you could find Hebrew writing, uh, them carrying a the culture. The Cubans or uh, Puerto Ricans, you can see there's a book called Lost Tribes in Promised Land, for example, where you can see that they say, I myself am from the tribe of Joseph, excuse me, from the tribe of Reuben. And my brother Joseph is on an island nearby. So when you actually go throughout history, you'll hear them say that they are descendants of the tribes of Israel. Long before I was alive, long before my organization existed, 
So when you do the historical research and line it up with the Bible, that's how we substantiate who they are. We didn't do this by picking and say, yeah, I want the Mexicans to be this, and I want this to be this, and I want that to be that. We just go by what the truth of the scriptures say and history that backs it up. That's how we base it. But don't you think it's kind of uh, convenient how somehow all of these tribes just all ended up in the Americas? Um, I would call it prophecy. And, and, you, and, it and even though, they, and then we look at the genetic modeling and we find that they're all rat, their genetic source, like the genetic modeling seems to suggest a radically different history, but they have radically me, different source question. populations. The transatlantic slave trade, where would you say it started? When did it start? Yeah. Or where, where did you say it started? Where would you say? Well, wasn't it just from like, yeah, you know, Eastern Africa to like the Caribbean? Yeah. That's kind of like the common history. The history is like transatlantic slave trade started from Africa to America, right? Um, but really, the transatlantic slave trade started from America to Spain first. When Columbus came over here, he took the Taino Indians, 1,100 of them, brought them over to Spain first in the transatlantic slave trade. And then once they saw that 300 survived, they said, okay, that's good business. And then they started exporting um, blacks from west coast of Africa or the Israelites from west coast of Africa into America. We share that. Like we share that collectively, even the native Indians and Hispanics coming over here to America. When you read second Ezra, the 13th chapter, you see that they, how they even got here to the Americas. So we line up uh, the Bible that second Ezra 13 verses 40 through 48 and then Deuteronomy 28 and 68, when it talks about the children of Israel going into slavery or Egypt again with ships. So we take that biblical reference, we use historical data, and then we line them up. And then that's how we determine who the children of Israel was or because if I'm not an Israelite, I wouldn't even read the Bible. I don't even know why people read the Bible if you're not an Israelite. If you're not an Israelite, the Bible not for you. That's a different. You know, it, it, it's it's an interesting it's an interesting belief system. I'm just I I've never been able to talk to someone with it before, so that's why I'm just trying to ask yeah, for your yeah, that's why I, when, I, when I noticed when I seen like where you were going with it, like you had questions, I was I said okay, let me answer some of his questions to dispel some of them, and that's what separates us from the so-called Jew. He's not a Jew at all. Never been a Jew. He's a liar. Hey hey Ralph, I did this debate with this um with this Assyrian Jew one time this guy and I pulled out the not we got that book here I pulled I out remember the book that. I remember you that I remember that remember that yes. so I pulled out the Hitler book Nazi when he had the picture the uh, the so called Jew when he called him the bastard I said this is what they think of y'all because they're not the Jewish man at all but if you ever ask them who's like the tribe of Naphtali or Issachar or Benjamin or anything like that they're not gonna have an answer for you because they're imposters. They converted like around 600 AD or 500 AD, one of those times. That's when they converted um, to that culture. So they're imposters. We are the ones that are actually them. And that's why when guys like a Kanye or Kyrie um, or any black person mentions that we're the children of Israel, it becomes a threat to the so-called Jew because he doesn't want the truth to come out. See, now when we get into this type of conversation, M and J, you're going to be like, damn, Cap, we we kind of close, you said. You know what I mean? So that's how we feel about that. Now, you brought this up, and it led me to this this question that I forgot to ask you. Uh, it says, Captain. Right, and, 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 hey, before you do that, Ralph, just the king that converted them is King Bulan of Khazaria. He's the king that converted them to what we today know as Judaism. Uh, F1 Groyper says, Captain, what did you think of Ye when you talked to him in the clubhouse space? What I thought of, of Ye was that, well, before I interviewed him, because I interviewed Kanye, and before I interviewed him, I was watching his videos, and most people was concerned about the uh, controversy between him and Adidas and if he was crazy and stuff like that. When I was watching him, I saw, like, a man that really wanted to express his spiritual side. And so when I interviewed him, um, it was me and unfortunately, a homosexual. I had no control over who was the other person interviewing him, a damn queer. 
was interviewing him, but I wanted to be a part of the interview side and I had no choice. You know what's funny is I was covering it live and then they uh -huh. brought you on. I was like, that's Captain Desaryak. What? Uh, and so we were watching it live and I was like, wow, it was blowing my mind. There's always a condition with Kanye that you've got to like associate with a faggot to associate with him. Yeah, so, listen, I don't know why. So the guy that set up the interview with Kanye, his name is Wack 100. Yeah. And I didn't know that I was going to do the interview at all. And he called Whack, the guy Whack calls me up and say I'm gonna do the interview. So I thought it was gonna just be me and Kanye at the time, but then the homo comes and now he's a part of it too. And I talked to him, so I talked to the homo because <laughs> I want to make sure we don't have no type of conflict in doing the actual interview because you know I'm against homosexuality. So as we're doing the interview, they was kind of asking him like superficial questions, and me and Kanye is talking, and Kanye tells me this joke. And I didn't laugh as a joke because the joke wasn't really that funny. I was like, ah. So he was like, no, nah, you want to have a real conversation. And that, that moment, that's when I asked him about how does he feel about how he's being represented and how does he feel about the Jewish man. And then when he answers that question, that's when the room went boom. I wish it hadn't because then we could have got to yep. maybe like the meat and potatoes of what he really wanted to talk about. So. I really, I agree. Um, I'm mad that the interview stopped, but I was grateful for the uh, opportunity that and I had. And for to those do. who don't know, they took it down off Clubhouse, and the whole thing got yes. subverted, yep. basically. Uh, and it was, it was just getting good too. Uh, actually, like you said, and then they cut it off, and it's like, oh my god, right? Uh, yeah, because right. I covered I, it. I was mad as hell about that. Yeah, and it was a big spot too. Uh, of course, mm -hmm. everybody, was, a lot of people, at least thousands a lot of, of people, people were talking listening. about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kept asking them, and we could have kept going, man. That could have been a wonderful interview. Well, you, and but, I'm not just saying this because you're, you know, you're a guest on my show fairly often. But that was the most interesting part of that, and it was just starting to get good, and it was like, uh, uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, but I'm it was cool. Listen, I'm glad to hear that you streamed it, man. I was yeah, like, I did. Okay, okay, I appreciate that. Yeah, we did. That's we streamed that, and it was hard to keep. Hey, white people don't love me, man. White people love me. Yeah, man. we had to. We had to get that on the air, and it was hard too. I had to like uh, plug in my Bluetooth to to stream from Clubhouse and all this stuff. But yeah, we yeah, did. Man, that's we, good. I we appreciate did, that. We did get it up there. All right, now uh, I think we have one more caller. If you want to get in here, get in here now. Uh, we're we're headed towards home here. Go ahead, uh, revanchist. Uh, you're on the yeah, kill stream. I got about ten more minutes, Ralph. Yeah, that's cool. That's right. Yeah, go ahead, uh, revanchist. Hey, Ralph, thanks for taking the call. Appreciate um, it. I had a couple questions for Captain. Sure. Yeah, uh, how you doing, man? I'm good to go. How you doing? I'm doing good. All um, right. I wanted to challenge you to not go to the dictionary for these questions. Um, <laughs> you say things like, black people learned rape and murder from whites. Is this like some slogan, or do you actually believe that blacks didn't rape and murder before coming into contact with whites? <laughs> Well, I don't believe that black people didn't murder or do any crimes before they came in contact with white, excuse me, contact with whites. What I'm doing is holding whites accountable for what they created when we came over here. Okay. They okay. Because they took away our identity. They took our way of life. So we don't, to be honest, like I can't speak for what they did or didn't do before we came over here in America because no one knows. But what I do know is that our names were changed, our identity was changed, our culture was changed, our way of life was changed. So everything we learned in America, we learned from white people. That's why I say that. Right. Well, uh, that's the dumbest shit I've ever heard. I mean, obviously, this is not a <laughs> I like this dude. Hey, what's thing. your name, man? What's your name? I'm Revenge of State. What, what's up? No, no, I, I, I like you. I was saying I like this dude. I just wanted to get your name. That's all. Nothing special. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm just messing with you, man. I, I'm messing I'm with sorry. you back. Listen, I, yeah, I'm I think, you back. What's that? He's I messing with you, too. With you yeah. I'm messing with you back. Yeah, it's not that serious, man. It's all over. Just get your point out, white boy. Come on. We need, we, need to hear, we need to hear what you're trying to say. Don't let him distract you with this bullshit. Oh, I like this nigga. Oh. Yeah, there you go. Don't get sucked in. My nigga Joel. Look, I like look, this look, nigga. Look. I, I, I think when what you say things Joel like, in the house? like black, I think when you say things that like black people learned rape and murder from white people, I think that's classic black narcissism. And you know that too. You How can that, a black you know be too. narcissist though? What's that? How can a black person be in, in, on this particular subject? How can a black person be narcissist in comparison to white people? Well, that's like a common thing in America. I mean, you have these endless this endless footage of 
black people going into stores and looting and shoveling valuables and electronics into carts. Um, and you have all these videos of, of black people. So you tell, wait, 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 hey, y'all burned down police stations, time, though. You'll blame that on white people. That's just crazy to me. I didn't it's, blame it's, it's that. Wait, I think you confuse. I think you're confusing. I didn't blame when white when black people loot on white people. I just say where we learned it from. You, you, yeah, you and that's not statistic. I mean, hey, obviously, hey, this hey, is not exclusive. How, hey, hey, obviously, how old are you? Not how old are, you? are you? Are you saying? But so, are you saying that black people were too stupid to figure out that it's possible to rape and loot and loot and murder without seeing a white person do it first? You said, is that what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm asking you a question. Do you think black people were too stupid to realize that it's possible to steal shit and rape and kill people? Um, and mm-hmm. the, the idea just never crossed their mind until they saw a white man doing it. Yeah, y'all. Hey, M and J, y'all evil, man. I just want to point that out first. But what I want to say, what I want to say, is I again, I never said that they never did any of that. So then, so then, how how would they have learned it from us if they already knew? Uh, they, if they're already doing it and they already knew about it. So, have you heard of buck breaking? Have you ever heard of that? Oh, term? Bro, I don't want to get sucked into these weird, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. These weird bullshit. It's funny because somebody me... actually sent that in earlier and I skipped it. But yes. Yeah, so, so now, so what, I, what I'll show you when you say, what did we learn? So when blacks were over here in slavery, white men slept and raped black women. White men raped black men. White men pitted black people against <laughs> each other. White men killed. I mean, I mean, looking at you, you got some milk in your chocolate, so there probably was a white man that raped a black woman at some point. Listen, and now he's glorifying rape. You hear that? <laughs> now, I'm not glorifying that's anything. That's I didn't say it. Well, it could have was probably consensual. It's probably consensual. A white man is, and I'm going to tell you how stupid he is. Rape does not qualify pregnancy. A woman can only get pregnant if she's ovulating. Rape does not, even a percentage of being, having a baby from rape is less than 1%. So if you're going to speak, speak intelligent. I make this oil. I have a business, right? This is a sidebar. I have an oil and butter business. One of the oils I have is called unfuckwittable. And my nigga Joel is learning. I am unfuckwittable. That's what he's learning right now. There's nothing you You seem kind of buck broken to me, dude, but I don't know. I told you. I can't tell you. How ignorant you are. Because when you bring that up, the percentages of rape that go to pregnancy is less than one percent. So your argument is stupid. But to answer the other It's not really an argument. I'm just I'm I'm just trolling you, man. I'm just trolling you. To answer the other cat's question, I never said we didn't do it. I just said where we learned it from. And you asked how buck breaking yeah so then that implication if you learned it from white people the implication of that statement is that black people were too stupid to even the thought didn't even occur to them that it was possible to commit crimes until they saw a white man doing it and they're like oh you can commit crimes wow i never thought of that till's the the white woman lied on emmett till so we even learned lying from y'all Oh, because you never, you never, no, no black man ever lied. Every, every black man only knew that telling America, the truth was possible. America, you know what we got? You know what we got in America? The white man can lie. Oh, well, wow. I'm this is, this is, this is revolutionary. You know what we got in America? We got a reset button of everything we had in Africa because you took it away. You took away culture, identity, name. So you can't take all of that away. And then as we watching you, as we grow up, as we children, watching this nasty oppressor do all the evil things that he's doing to us. And then we learn that culturally. You can learn that genetically. There's a study. You know what? You still have a slave mindset, man. You still have a slave mindset. You're not actually taking uh, you know any you responsibility for your own agency. You're no, blaming no. the white man for your true. own innate potential. That's not true. Because what I said in the beginning of this conversation I said, I'm never absolving anybody for what they did. You have to point out the root, and then you create the solution. So me talking about history, he asked me a historical question. So me pointing out history is not me absolving black people for what they do today. You're saying that the white man taught you how to do these things as if these things aren't inherent, innate human potentials. All people have the ability to steal, to rape, to murder. You know, slavery passes down generationally. Now I'm going to educate you some more. Let's say you take a pregnant woman. Let's say you take a pregnant woman, right? Uh, And this is a psych study. It said, this is a 2018 review. It said they found that evidence that trauma can be passed between generations epigenetically, which means that trauma experienced by an ancestor 
might affect the way your genes are expressed. This is a site, Psych Central. So when you take it, take a woman that's pregnant, right? You take a woman that's pregnant, she got a kid in the stomach, and then she's getting depressed. Whether it's depressed or not, let's say if she has a horrible pregnancy, what happens to her happens to the child, and then it passed down. So slavery has genetic principles that have passed down. I just read it. So this ain't about um, making excuses for what we've done, but this is also not about absolving the uh, killer for what he did to the victims or the one that kidnapped what he did to the ones that are kidnapped. Because let's say if someone harms someone and you don't want them to get harmed again, you're going to point out the person that did the harm. You're going to teach that person. But this person's nature is like this. This is what you have to do to avoid them. So when we go out on the street and teach, what we teach is, yeah, the white man did this, but we're doing this today. You shouldn't be a murderer. You shouldn't be a drug dealer. You shouldn't be a homosexual. You shouldn't be none of those things. So we don't justify crime. I'm not like M and J. M and J, because he <laughs> believes in his party, justifies the crime that Trump committed. He feels Trump should have not even gotten arrested. Trump should not have gotten arrested. We'll let you know he don't even care about the government. The government arrested Trump. And he's against the government that arrested Trump. From my perspective, if Trump was black and committed a crime, he's supposed to get locked up for that crime. He's supposed to get locked up. He's supposed to go to jail. And whatever he's convicted of, he serves out that. Now, if he's not convicted, if he's innocent, then he should be able to go free. So we don't absolve it, but we just point out the person that caused it and the person that's still living it. That's the only way they heal. A rapist, a, ra a, a victim of rape, can't get over being raped until they face the trauma. It's a pretty big difference, though, between being a homosexual or a murderer and just mishandling some documents, right? Mishandling documents is not of anywhere near the same gravity. You talk about deny Trump. the political. He loved. Yeah, I mean, he loved Trump. He loved Trump. Look at him. He about to defend that nigga. Good. Why? Why wouldn't I defend him? Why? Why? Of course, I'm gonna why defend him. Said, why wouldn't I defend him? Good job. Good job. I think you should, man. Keep going. You're doing a good job. Yeah. Well, the point, but the point is, is apt. If Trump was uh, a homosexual, uh, I wouldn't be defending that because I would find it detestable. Right. Uh, if he's mishandling I documents, I don't give a shit. He can mishandle as many documents as he wants. If he wants to, if he, he didn't do an insurrection, I'm upset. January 6th was cucked. Like if he actually did overthrow the, the government and install a, a, like a, a Trump dictatorship, that would have been literally the greatest thing ever. Um, unfortunately, he followed too many laws. Um, wait, wait, say that but, part again, MJ. Say that part again, what you just said. Say that again one more time. I don't need to say it again. You heard what I said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Nah, he on Rumble. They good on Rumble. You can say whatever you want over there. They straight. <laughs> you keep going. You, what you done? Hey, man. I got. Hey, hey I got like three more minutes. That's bro. fine. Uh, let's. Yeah, let's... because it's about the greater good. It's about ultimately a political oh. system. A system of laws is instantiated by political authorities. And if those political authorities are corrupt, which they are in the United States, what is presiding over a rape? Is it corruption subjective? Because don't yeah, they well, think okay, well, corrupt? That's why they think that paperwork he had. Well, let me list. Let me list. Let me list what what's wrong with the regime. Mm -hmm. The regime. What regime are you talking about? Just so we could be clear. The, the American. The American, the well, U.S. government, the current, the, the left. Y'all call them the left, right? Yeah, but I'm against. The, I'm against the establishment, the political establishment in the United States. I'm a dissident. Are you against, are you against like Joe Biden? Like Joe Biden and is white. So are you against them as white, or are you against the political party they represent? Well, Joe Biden has no loyalty to the white race, so I have no loyalty to him. So you're against Joe. So you don't like. So you don't even like. So you don't like black people. You don't like white people either. I don't have a problem with black or white people because of their inherent characteristics, but I am loyal to my people and I have a problem with my fellow whites who aren't loyal to our people. Mm. And loyalty is letting criminals get away with crimes. 
No, no because the regime, the regime no. itself is criminal. Yeah, I, the regime I, I, itself is criminal. So obeying its laws, it. its laws have no sanction fundamentally. You have only obey the laws because laws of the pragmatic no necessity to do so. Laws have no if you sanctions. once a righteous once a righteous regime is installed, then its laws become worth uh, yeah. obeying. Yeah. But or, this, this is a regime that says it's legal to kill your own child uh, in the womb. This is a regime that says homosexuals can get married. Hey, when Trump was this in is office, a regime when that, Trump was in that office, pays people to that pays people to hey, get transgender office, operations to abort your baby. When Trump was in office, yeah, well, I, I I think that's a problem. I'm no, not I'm not I, a I staunch uh, Trump supporter, but it's just like it's like the only option on the table relative okay. to other options. But I criticize Trump a lot. I mean, I, ultimately, okay. Trump. But I agree, up, as I said, but I agree with you with abortion and homosexuality. Those those core prints. I don't think you. I don't think you're against homosexuality because you're a Catholic, though. I don't really think. Of course, you, I'm against. No, uh, no. Nah, nah, this nah. is just a pointless rhetorical. You gotta denounce, uh, kind of, you gotta get, denounce Catholicism because they molest boys. I'm not. De- I'm not denouncing Catholicism. Catholicism a lot of money. Homosexuality is a sin, according to Catholicism. Not the Roman. Okay, no, it's I de- not. How is homosexuality yes, is. a sin and they molesting boys, paying them three hundred billion dollars? How is it a sin? It's not a sin to them. I don't understand why you can't understand this it's principle. A it's a very you know, it's a secret. You know, you know what I'm not gonna denounce tonight's show. Which has been a lot of fun. And I know we got a rap, so I wanna let I, I'm not gonna denounce tonight's show. I'm not gonna denounce Captain or Joel. I'm gonna let you get your first the first final word, Captain, and, and Joel get the second since you let off. But go ahead. Joel, before I do that, was you an altar boy? No, I was not an altar boy. I was not raised Catholic. You better thank God you weren't an altar boy. You'd have got part of that three billion. Hey man, Ralph, I appreciate you having me on this show. Thank you. I absolutely. I ain't the one broken. who's still buck broken, man. I ain't. I would absolutely look at he look. He touchy. He touchy. You talk. Why you talking about my look. closing? Why are you talking? It's a closing time now, man. Go ahead. <laughs> what, you want a jab? Oh, you had to get in a jab so. first. Go ahead. Go ahead. You should be you thankful for that milk in your you chocolate. I'm telling you. Look at, look Don't become crying to me you about being buck broken. Your time. Go ahead, no, Captain. Go ahead. Your time, man. Tell them where to find you and tell us anything else you want to tell us here at the end. I appreciate you coming on. Thank you. I gave you a whole nickname, man. Be thankful. Yeah, if you want to come to the barbecue, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen. Hey, it's always a pleasure being on Killstream, man. Uh, you, man. Me and Ralph have known each other maybe about three or four years now. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love being a guest on the show. Um, I love the debates. I love having a conversation. I love the freedom of even having the conversation. So anytime Ralph reaches out to me and want to do a show, I think it's good. Uh, Joel, uh, excellent conversation. Um, I appreciate your genuine honesty in the questions that I ask. Um, I look forward to, if you ever want to have this dialogue again, maybe a different subject or something like that, I'm all for it. I am Captain Tazaryak of ICBK under command of Jenny Hanna, um, and that's my time, and I'm done. Thank you so much. And you mentioned every couple months. Maybe we'll try to do something again before the summer's yeah, over. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, I, before, I, yeah, before September's over. Yeah. I, I was thinking maybe in September let's do something else. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. And and I appreciate it again for you coming on. I appreciate you coming on as well, Joel Davis. Uh, I would consider you a friend and uh, got to know you a little bit uh, this year. And uh, you were very nice to me during a time when, um, I, you know, I was pretty down, uh, and I think everybody knows what I'm talking about. Uh, so I appreciate that just on a personal level, and I appreciate you doing the show tonight and being generous with your time. And tell people where to find you and what you're working on or anything else here at the end. Yeah, so you can find me. I have a YouTube channel at Joel da- YouTube.com slash at Joel Davis videos. You can find me on YouTube. Most on Cozy, Cozy.tv slash Joel Davis. Uh, you can also, I have a second YouTube channel, which is directed towards Australian news. Uh, a show I do with my colleague, Blair Cottrell, which is, uh, if you're interested in Australian politics, basically from a white nationalist perspective, um, you can go to youtube.com slash at Joel and Blair and find the Joel and Blair show. Um, I also have a telegram and a Twitter and my handle on both telegram and Twitter is Joel Davis X. Put an X on the end because, uh, unfortunately Joel Davis was already taken. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Go ahead. Finish finish your farewell here. I knew he was going to chime in. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Joel Davis X. On Telegram, is that the same on Twitter as well? 
Correct. Oh, what am I going to do? Uh, now, cozy.tv slash Joel. I'm completely thrown off now. You know what? Thank you both yeah, for coming on. Steal that too. White man gonna steal that ass too. <laughs> white man can't have none. You can't have oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. So you, so, so you, all the stuff you do that is bad. That comes from us. But all the <sighs> stuff that isn't bad, we took it from you. That's basically how it works, he right? Heard, he heard. I'm just talking about the letter. The letter. <laughs> the letter X is yours. I didn't apparently. The dictionary, man. But you just tell me somebody that was called X that was not a Muslim. My name, my, my name is just Joel. I'll put an X on the end because it's, a, it's an elegant way of maintaining the brand. My uh, nigga, Joel Ben X. Just put a kufi on your head, man. Get some bean pies. Get the Quran. Get out there, man. Do it, man. I, I would say do it. You know what? Well, uh, 70 virgins and shit. You go blow yourself up. Don't do that. I disavow terrorism, but I avow this show. Thank you both for coming on tonight. A round of applause. Thank you, guys. I'll talk to you both soon. Have a good one. Be safe out there.